Okay. Good evening. I'd like to open the August 21st, 2019 hearing of the Harwich Conservation Commission. The first item on the agenda is a request for a termination of applicability for five Sketch Conant Way, a proposal to create a path to the water. Do we have a representative tonight? Hi, I'm Mark Sangiolo. I'm here with my father, Joe Sangiolo, the property owner. And I'm Joe Sangiolo, the property owner. <laughs> you would describe your project, please. So this is a residential um, property, single family house, along has a 20 foot um, strip of land that goes down to the Herring River. It's heavily, uh, it's wooded and po a lot of poison ivy and we'd like to um, clear a path so that the um, people that are enjoying the home can go get down to the river. There's a, I believe there's a site plan that shows approximate location. And you can see from the, the two shots from the river, um, the house there is our neighbor's house and his, um, embankment and dock structure and you can also see um, the old um, dock that was part of the property the for the post there are two there two have fallen into the river we like to uh, get rid of those and clean up around them and you can also see a little uh, rowboat that's turned upside down that thing in blue at the edge of the bank so there was always uh, access down to the, the river to launch small craft Any comments, Amy? So when I met with Joe, um, I had mentioned that putting a, putting stakes down the center line of where the path was going to be would be important so we could kind of see where the path was. Actually, both of my site visits to the site, when they were not marked, I think I was too far south of. Um, I parked at this property, but I think we were only looking over in, on this one. Or it's heavily wooded. So because it was, I'm saying it's important to mark these things out because I couldn't even tell where the path was going to go. Well, I, um, the fact is, I don't remember that you said that, okay. so, so it was not marked. Okay. Um, it's just when you're proposing a project, it's important to, yeah. for us to understand yeah. a project, it should be marked. Sure. However, for this one, it's a, for, to me, it's a fairly benign project as long as you are, so commissioners, we were just to the, to the south of this today. We didn't walk far enough up north to the adjacent property. I, I remember seeing it farther up, but. Um, There's no rush on the project, so if you prefer us to try, it's, there are a lot of poison ivy there, so it's yeah. kind of hard to stake it. But if you prefer us to do that and come back, we'd be happy to do that. One other thing, too, we would like to do, it's not a very big drop to the, uh, river there it's, uh, we would like to do like a little slope bank with like a simple rail or something not a big stair structure or anything just so just people can get down safely great graded a little bit there okay. that changes the project a little bit because you might be filling in a coastal bank and a little bit of a coastal beach I understand what you're trying to do it's not part of the proposal and again we don't know exactly where this is um, as far as the path creation just walking it in the in the general area because you're asked you're saying the path can meander, you don't want to take down you know trees. You just right. want to meander it through, and I'm thinking you probably use a gravely or something to create the path just to mow it, yes. that mow the stuff down. If the commission is comfortable, as long as we had site visits with each other and uh, walked the site, 
as long as we could come up with an agreement about where the path could be, because it is what you're sounding to do is very minor yeah. for the path. I'm comfortable recommending approval of the path um, with oversight from my department. But we'll have to see as far as um, regarding bringing in probably some fill, a little bit of fill and grading with a handrail, if the commission views that in the scope of this, which it wasn't yeah. part of the application. Right. Or if I mean, you can kind of see the, the scale of the project with yeah. There's the property right next door that has a completely um, bulkheaded waterfront and a dock. And all we're asking for is a little, you know, get down there safely. We understand. It's just you can't right. tell where it is. So right. Well, we, like I said, we're, it's not a rush. We could uh, postpone it and mark everything more carefully. All right. want to um, go around the table with comments from the commissioners. Mark, do you have any comments? Um, other than I would agree with Amy that I think it uh, would be very appropriate to let her handle that at an administrative level and work through the details on site with the owner. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, I'd agree with, with that for the path. Um, any sort of uh, structure on the bank, I think we would I'd want to see uh, plans for that and, and review them. That's all. I have a question. You mentioned you, you showed the boat there and everything. Are you yeah. proposing to like have any craft there, kayaks or anything there? Yes, of course. Because we do have uh, the bank here and the marsh here now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which could be destructive to the marsh. Yes, we would like to get, um, you know, there's a little uh, space between the um, grass there. And right now there's like, there's a fallen down, one of the piers has fallen down there. And we'd like to, there's actually two of them. And we'd like to get rid of those and maybe create a small strip right down to the water with, you could launch kayaks and enjoy the river. So that's another change here because right now in your picture there's all grass, you know, it's all marsh grass there. Yeah, there's a little space between them. But and also storage of vessels, um, that should be up on raft. Sure. That yeah, should be, we right. should know that okay. should not be stored on the marsh. Right. That actually, that little strip of area between the marsh and the bank is actually a resource area. It's a coastal beach. Sure. Um, so that has standards too. Of course. Yeah, the only comment I had, you mentioned you wanted to clean up around the posts and all. And obviously, the marsh grass that's there is also helping the erosion that would, that would impact the, uh, that would uh, run up against the bulkhead that's next to it. So you take that grass out, you're going to get erosion in there right. pretty severely, I think, because of, of the flow of the water with, with the town river from there. So I, I, you know, I think we need to be very careful and make sure that Amy's aware of any cleanup that you do. Sure. Else, no, I'm just a little bit concerned because of from what started out as a simple path, we've had two or three additions to the well, project here. Yeah, I, I did make it to the site, and I think once the others, you guys go down there, you're going to see that um, the bank is very natural. Um, I don't think we want to see any impact to the bank um, or structures on the bank. I, I think just a, a path to access the beach is fine, but I think alterations to the bank I, it will be difficult to support. You've got Salt Marsh doing well, just a little bit to the, the south of this spot. I need anything. And just I think a it's a good example of how some of these shoreline structures are causing erosion to adjacent mm -hmm. properties. And I think the bank is the erosion of the bank is being exacerbated by the fact that that structure is right there. Yeah. So it's really it, it's a site everyone should get out to see. And I, I certainly support you know your I interest. Have, I have a question. <clears throat> if we didn't do anything with the uh, with the bank there, just a rail, would mm -hmm. that be better? Because that's we just need some somebody Safe. to be able to get down there. Something yeah, it, it, it's a different request. I, I, it's a it's a naturalized bank right now. I, we don't typically support structures in that resource area. Uh, so uh, uh, you call a rail. But they are being approved, right? I see them on the Herring River all the time. And I'm what's being not approved? Part of the application. Oh, not this. Yeah, we could break into two. If you're more comfortable with that. Do path and come back for the whatever. Well, for the, the ease of you know your process, I'd I'd have it just as one and just you know put everything you want into the application. Sure. Um, you know I'm sure there's some way you can you know keep a kayak up on the bank yeah, right. and then walk it down. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know about putting a structure on the bank. Um, okay. We'll have to think about that one carefully. So, 
how about because we do allow sometimes, you know, path, we allow the path. Mm -hmm. Because if you add fill and you put a rail up, every year that fill is going to be washed okay. away. Um, so that's. Well, that's a concern of repeat. So well, well, your dad's right, ready to agree to just well, a rail. Why don't we? Why don't we do nothing? Uh, so and, and, and saying, why don't we get to that point? Or something, something a little more permanent. But I don't know if that's. Oh, is that thing. what you prefer? We didn't think we thought that would See, really I, be I don't taken. Think, I don't think I would support a staircase at, at this okay. bank. You know, I, I, you know, everyone needs to get down there and take a look at it. it that proposal wasn't before us, so right. we haven't really thought no, about it. Wasn't but that that one site that we looked at over a long pond where they had a steep bank going down. And they put a, a path that traversed sort of sideways off the slope, which was easier to, to get down as well, rather than going straight down the slope. What if we just do the path and do nothing with the bank and see what we got, and then we'll come back for a different approach? That, that's probably a good approach, I think, for this site, because... Well, it's, um, I've never been down there. Yeah, no, and I can meet you. I'll be meeting with you on the site anyways yeah, for the path, so... I mean, we were there, but I wasn't... Did you make it to the bank? Well, we weren't sure we where the path was. was. <laughs> we were on the bank, like right. south of there. So we did see how we did see it steep at the drop off. Yeah. There was yeah. A bunch of canoes and kayaks already down on the bank. On the, uh, That's not this property. Yeah, yeah it's, it's north of there. That Little, we, were looking for. Yeah. we didn't get up there that point. Right. Okay. Well, how do you want to proceed? Do you guys want to get out and see it, or can you approve path. the path? Approve the path and then come out with the rest. I think um, I, I don't see a problem with that unless, Amy, you really want to see it staked out. Well, I was going to, before they do anything, I wanted to walk it with you anyways sure. to agree on the path location. And okay. then if we talk about the other stuff, if, I, if it's fit to come back as an amendment, I'll direct you how to do that. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then, um, would someone like to make a motion on that? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the RDA for... Five sketch Comet way uh, for a, a path to the water with a, a negative three determination. We need a second and first. Second. So second by Stan and any comments? Well, I would just like to include with Amy's oversight of mm -hmm. this because it wasn't mapped out or, or mm -hmm. staked out like it was. Yeah, yes, I agree with that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a signature page for this one, so I may have asked you to come in and sign okay. at your leisure over the next week or so. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, next on the agenda we have a request for termination of applicability for 7 Uncle Will's Road. The request to raise and rebuild an existing building. We do. I'm Phil Miller from Miller Starbuck Construction. I'm here to represent the Morales. So this is a residential project in an AE11. It's um, basically a raise and replace of a small house, um, crawl space, wood structure, two stories in the footprint of an existing house. Thank you. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a very small lot, 5,460 square feet. It is in a floodplain. Um, so on AE11, it's floods onto the Herring River. Um, existing elevations on the site, um, correct me if I'm wrong, six, seven, eight, es essentially existing elevations. Um, so they would have to comply with uh, flood zone regulations. We did have a little bit of a com um, I don't know if it was with you or with um, Mike. Mike about yeah. one of the plans says you know first floor foundation, right. twelve and a half. The other plan says an eleven and a half. So 
per our regulations, it has to be twelve and a half is the correct. So I have a revised if you want. That would be great if I could have that. I'm going to put it here, but if I could have it, that would be good. Because when the building permit application yeah, comes course, in, we yeah. cross-reference it. So that just means, you know, that their utilities and whatnot cannot be below that elevation. So you're talking about having you know, flood vents and whatever you need to comply with your flood zone regulations. The house itself is a teardown rebuild really in kind. They have an existing um, shed in the backyard that they're proposing to remove. Correct me if I'm wrong. And you're, also, and you're going to be putting in a concrete patio. Right. So. Well, a, you know, block. Right. Concrete blocks or. Something pervious. Right. Okay. So when you kind of overlay the shed and the patio, it's about a wash in terms of the square footage. So we're not seeing an increase in square footage of structure in the flood zone. Um, so. That I don't have any other. It's not in that habitat. Um, oh, the limit of work wasn't shown on the plan. It's a really small site, but recommends some sort of a you know silt fence limit of work around. Well, because of the size of the project, I guess we just do the perimeter. That's what I was assuming yeah. we were going to do is pretty much the lot yeah. perimeter because you're so you're so tight there. But that's to ensure no encroachment right. on the property. Of course, yeah. Um, so I think in this case, a, silt, a stake silt fence is fine. I don't think you need models or anything. Um, and I'd recommend approval because it is technically a resource. Um, I would recommend a negative two approval. Okay, thank you, Amy. Any comments? John, do you mind? I have none. Okay, Jim? Uh, no comments. Okay, Ernie. Okay, well, um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the RDA for 7 Uncle Will's Road uh, to raise and rebuild the existing building with a negative 2 determination. Second. Seconded by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have a request for change in plans. The commercial sugar kelp site in Nantucket Sound. Hey, how are you? Uh, Mark Kelleher, Kelleher Farms. I was before you last year. I have a uh, permit from the DMF and the Army Corps of Engineers to have three lines, 250 feet. Um, after this year's harvest, which was less than expected, I'd like to move my, the uh, primary uh, location I have is about nine tenths of a mile off Herring River. I'm going to, I'd like to move it closer to about six tenths of a mile closer. I'm hoping to pick up the outflow from the Herring River and the nutrients. And hopefully to improve the, uh, you know, the growth. So that's basically uh, we're talking about the same two lines. I'm just moving it closer to shore by three tenths of a mile. Well, we hope you pick up the nutrients too, as <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Any comments, Amy? Yeah. Um, first, we sent Mark off to Waterways and John Rendon and Heights first, and they have no. Um, went in front of them, correct me if I'm wrong, they had no issue in terms of navigation or habitat concerns with the change. Um, you are proposing to go from three anchor held 150 to 200 foot horizontal long lines down to two at 250 foot length. Um, what's the, at the, those respective locations, what are the differences in depths, just out of curiosity? Um, well, where I was last year it was approximately 20 to 23 feet, I thought, you know, at a seven foot depth of the line. Um, now I'm a, um, uh, let me just quickly check. I'm about uh, 13 feet. You know, based on the growth that I had last year, that should be adequate to support to an optimum growth. Right. So you're still going to be seven feet underneath? Yes. For navigation purposes. Um, Proposed change is actually less than what he was previously allowed to do. So I'd recommend approval of the change in plan to allow for the new coordinates and all of his other conditions in terms of reporting and everything else we're doing. Mm -hmm. Same duration? Yes, same time of year restriction. No, same um, duration for the permit still. Yeah, we can't we can't change that. So his permit is valid, your permit is invalid until September fifth, twenty twenty one. 
-hmm. So it's, you got two more years on this permit. Okay. Yeah, we can't change the way uh, Is there any reporting that we're expecting for this project? You did submit, um, sorry if it wasn't in your packets, you did submit um, your first year's assessment. And maybe if you have two minutes, just can you explain what you found? Sure. Um, the report uh, documented the visiting to the site uh, biweekly. Um, for the 250-foot line, optimally, optimally, I would have expected uh, 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. I only harvested 150 to 200 pounds. Um, it was not restaurant grade. Uh, that was the ideal thing. And um, as a frame of reference, the, in Chatham, they, they had uh, growth less than des desired. Woods Hole Oceanographic and Buzzards Bay also had the same thing. So this is kind of a last chance to see if the nutrients will make a difference uh, in the growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? Commissioners? <coughs> I'll, I'll ask him take a look. Yep. I'll go around. Jim? Uh, no, no, no comments. No comments. No. All right. Um, let me think. Any any thoughts? I know you've mentioned in the past about going inside the river to try to set up. Any thoughts on that, or is that something you're waiting? Um, you know, I don't want to. Uh, that was almost would be almost a whole other permit process. I don't want to mess that up. Right. Uh, I'd have to s t talk to you. I don't know if on the um, um, friends already on his pier, if down the base of that, if mm -hmm. it would be worth putting a small little six or eight foot piece there to see mm -hmm. directly in the river if that would make a difference. I could, you know, I, I just don't want to go through the whole permit process right. just, just for something that small. It is private property, but I don't really know. So right. I'd stay to, I've stayed away from that, but if, uh, you know, if, if, when I'm doing that, I will have some extra kelp spores if I have some. If you know, I could ask Mr. Zaretti and yeah. give a call to you just to, just you know, one little length under the pier there and see how that would work. Yeah, I, I do you see any, any issue with that because I, as long as it's underneath, it's yeah, not. yeah, it wouldn't be in any navigational thing, it'd be right underneath, right? We would need to document it, but I don't see it for a trial for a line. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we'd all like to see this become mm -hmm. successful yeah. and, and uh, maybe be instructive to others, too. So um, any comments from the audience? Are there any successful areas in this area that are doing similar type? Um, and I don't mean to say you're not successful, but <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. I do know that the, I, uh, a woman down on Block Island had some pretty good growth. She had, uh, from what I understand, six to eight feet. I, I I couldn't answer that, okay. but that's the goal. That's where yeah. you really you know get your return. But I know the growth was less than what everybody thought that we'd get, both for myself, Chatham, and Woods Hole and Buzzards Bay. Were there locations similar to what you've got now? In those Chatham and Woods Hole. Well, Chatham is right outside of Stage Harbor, um, and Woods Hole is in Buzzards Bay, so. Uh, well, you know, it's the same body of water. I thought Chatham could have been, may have had a little bit better growth because they got an inflow from the cut, yeah. but I, still hard to tell. I, I do think Maine is pretty successful, and they're in these inlets, and they get that runoff, so that's why I want to get closer to the river. Yeah. Any thoughts on water clarity and uh, how it might affect? Well, that's a good point. Um, this, they did sampling, the green wave that I worked with, they did sampling during the um, winter and I, they're still analyzing it. I mean, that would affect photosynthesis, but I, you know, I was out there during the winter and during the winter, uh, during the winter and spring, I didn't see clarity as an issue. Yeah. It's only mainly this time of year and I'm out of the water right. by May. Interesting. Okay, um, any other thoughts or comments? Do we have a motion on the request for an amendment? Change of plans. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the request for a change in plans for the uh, sugar kelp aquaculture and Nantucket Sound. Second. Second by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mark, all you're going to get from us is basically your letter, which is prior to changes, will be stamped.
Okay, next we have a notice of intent for 61 Bells Neck Road, proposal for new dwelling and appurtenances. They've requested a continuance to September, September, 4th. September 4th. I move that we approve that request. Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, there's a notice of intent for zero Sequatam Road, storm damage repairs. All right, if we bring this other chair up. Sure. Did you miss one? The shape of that one? That's, oh, I don't see it on. I have it on. No, location. it's, ne it's oh. next. Yeah, sorry, the site summaries are not in the same order as the agenda. Oh. Okay. Started okay. that was before the agenda got set. So they're all there, they're just, that one's flip flopped. Yep, okay. Uh, good evening, Dan Crota from Moran Engineering. I'm here with uh, Joe Preston, the property owner, and Peter Sumner, the landscape, Joe's landscape contractor for the property, who would, is going to be doing um, whatever uh, repairs, fixes that get approved. Um, we were here, or I was here probably in May, and we've been continuing since then, waiting for a time when um, Joe was available. And uh, it's convenient, obviously, that Peter's able to be here with us. Um, I'm hoping that everybody still has the pictures of showing the what the what the property looks like. Um, looks the same now. It's water is about five feet further away from the um, from the land. So there's two. There's a uh, horizontal horizontal uh, landscape tie wall that the um, that you can see in the far of the pictures are on page two. We have a pretty good close up. And you can see that the, um, the bottom underneath is um, washing out. And then there's a vertical uh, small pile wall that's um, compromised and falling over. Uh, so the original proposal uh, was, to, was to replace them with um, segmented block walls something permanent, non-leaching, um, that'll hold the, um, the bank back. And uh, we thought that was the best option because it gets permitted once and that is done. Um, the, the, uh, at a meeting at the site, Peter brought up the idea of just using landscape ties, so we are open to that also, replacing what's in place. I don't think we'd want to replace the vertical as in um, piles because it's insufficient unless it's driven down six feet or so. Uh, so down there, go, ha, having gone down there last week, um, the three of us, Peter's take is th all the work for the uh, horizontal wall that's in front of the deck. That can all be done or needs to be done by hand. Um, two, it's two and a half foot three feet tops wall. Um, the supports for the deck need to re be replaced also. That would obviously be done by hand. Um, ideally, the vertical wall, that part would be a small machine would be used because there is the path down that a machine could go down and it is uh, right in front of that path and the soil and the soil that needs to be moved to, to create to fix the wall because there's been a lot of erosion there. The idea would be to plant the put put the wall in and then um, at the deck side plant behind it for the seed mix. The idea on the um, west side would be um, plant behind and in front where um, where it's not the beach. Uh, we originally brought up the idea of putting sand on the beach. That was the whole, I think the whole commission was not in favor of that. Um, but the, but the uh, stones, the, the patio that was destroyed needs to be picked up. Uh, there was a um, fire pit down there that shows on the previous two plans the commission saw. And the owner would like to rebuild that. Other than that, um, I think the pictures tell the story. 
Um, Peter could go over a little bit of the uh, process of building the wall, of, of um, constructing the wall. What we'd like to choose, uh, Mr. Preston has chosen a Roman Pisa wall by ideal. Uh, it's a very uh, non-commercial, I guess is as non-commercial as you can possibly get for a uh, modular wall. <coughs> I have pictures of it, if you'd like to see them. Uh, the wall is built, uh, it's dug down, we'll do about a two feet dig to put a footing in of stone, three quarter inch to an inch and a half stone. Uh, that'll be compacted. The stone will lay on top of that. The first course will be leveled out and then it was, it's just like Legos, you build it right up, it's no big deal. Uh, the wall will not exceed four feet. Uh, we would like to put geo grid in anyway just to benefit us uh, at, two at a two foot increment. So the first two feet will be, or well, at two feet will be a geo grid. After that will be the next two or next four segments of block with a cap on top backfilled with the, the fill that was already there. Uh, it's a pretty self-explanatory. It's easy to do. I mean, it's a, I would say, uh, degree of difficulty is a little difficult for us as, as workers because we're carrying stuff down a hill. Uh, but I don't see any problem with doing it and, and uh, we'll be as in-invasive as, poss as we could possibly be. Thank you. Amy, any comments for us? So I'll leave the comment, I'll leave any comments I have about what the wall is going to be made out of to the commissioner who's in the trades and has other comments for that. I'll just stick to um, the wetland stuff. So the new not, not underneath the deck, but the wall that's going to replace essentially where the vertical posts are now. Um, that is that wall going to now be a little bit farther, closer seaward than what's existing now? No. Some of the members might. Some of the members might be. It seems like it's a pretty straight line. Okay. It looks like they're kind of farther, a little bit farther up the bank. That's all. Okay. So they may be. The I'm plan shows a straight wall across. That is proposed to be a straight wall across. Yeah, it looks like it curves a little bit. The existing wall, it's vertical wall, cruises it. a little bit closer to the pond. So are you proposing to do that? Is there going to be any fill brought in? There will be no need for fill because in the process of excavating to build this straight wall, we're going to gain fill. Which one are we talking about? This one? Yeah. I think at some point it's in front of the wall. At some point it's behind the behind wall. It. So what I'm getting at is approximate vicinity. It's the same? Yeah. Um, so um, in terms of the wall that's underneath the deck, it's very um, very much still functioning. The other one is not functioning, but you can tell that the intent many couple of decades ago was for bank containment. So right. my review of, of it is that that does constitute a wall, and what you're proposing to do in some fashion, what we decide upon, would be to replace that um, as long as you keep to a similar square footage. Um, that would be a replacement. I think it's great that you're proposing to clean up all the debris and make everything more stable. A um, little bit concerned with just using a seed mix on the slope there. Uh, you have a lot of moss right now, some grasses. The grass does have really good root systems. Um, grass also lends itself not necessarily by you but by whoever may come in the future to be mown. Um, so I think adding a little bit of diversity in terms of not just grasses, but shrubs, things like that, um, would A, help your stabi stability and species diversity on the banking. And uh, well, essentially it would help, also help your top down erosion, You're proposing a little bit of grading at the top there. Yeah, they were at the top for dr because they're getting uh, down. water flow down, so we're yeah. trying to prevent that erosion, excess erosion in the future. So that'll help. So I think plan that shows a little bit more of using our native plant list, using a little bit more species diversity on that banking would be um, be really helpful for the site itself. Yeah. Um, and also create a little bit more habitat and buffer for the pond. Um, 
while you know it is such a slope, probably wouldn't impede any type of view that you have. Sure. So that's why I recommend putting it together. Um, just quickly go through my. Oh, you said there was a fire pit before. I didn't. Can you point it out to where it is on the plan and where you want to put it? Because I don't. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't see it. It doesn't show on the plan because it's, it's obliterated. You, you can actually see on this picture. On the second page. Yep. There's a picture of right here. And it's picture. over in this area right here. What's it? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's over. What does it really consist of? I'm just what I'm getting at yeah, is this like a new structure so or some uh, slate? Joe has a great picture oh. of it. Do you? It's on his phone. Yeah, good. All right, thank you. It shows on the um, the dock plan. It okay. shows on a prior landscaping plan. Pictures here. Which I can I pass this around? This is all of the uh, pieces from that. Yeah, I can tell now. <laughs> Thank you. It's been just a long time since you know, we've all visited the site together, so I don't remember all the little pieces. So, okay. So where I'm getting at with that is, if the commission considers that a new structure or not, is it also something that? So where is it on the? No. It's over. It's not on this. It's, it's to the no, but we're we're yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And is it something <coughs> that maybe could be closer? That could be at the water's edge. Could be something closer to the top of the banking um, to really create more of an undisturbed buffer um, no. there while still allowing some enjoyment of that. So that's just something to talk about with the rest of the commission. Um, I don't have. Thank you. I don't think we have any other. Oh, so the shed is going to be removed and rebuilt a foot higher. I think those are my comments for right now. Thanks. I do have the dock permit that shows the location of the fire pit. Oh, that's okay. That's, that's I'm sure I have that in another file, but can I have this? Yes. I'm just going to say shows location of fire pit. There was another uh, filing with the commission that showed it also. The 16s. Yep, it does. When is that one dated, maybe? Team. Okay. And is the, the wall we're talking about on that plan as well? Yes. Okay. So in a case like this, um, we're considering the wall to be pre-existing. So the wall, this was for the dock. The wall that's underneath the deck shows on this. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go through my files. This plan does not show these vertical structures. Right. So how do we determine in this case whether it is pre-existing and previously permitted or came in before the permits were required? I would say it came in just, you can correct, I would say it came in before that and just didn't. Wasn't part of that file. Right. right. I, it may have been others, I, I, which I have not researched. Yeah. So how do, how do we confirm that it, it um, is an authorized structure? I'd have to look at the files um, to see if it ever showed up in any plans or we'd have to know from some, some have some knowledge that it was existing prior to 1978. I think it had a use. I mean, th this is these are both yeah. retaining walls. That without them, this you're going to lose a lot of the bank. Gone. We can find some old photos, I'm sure. Um, but these not not only does the the timbers look old, but they certainly are holding back. You know, that whole landscaping would have had to have been done recently. This, these things are holding back, right? I, I know that. I'm just. I want to be sure that it's. You know, it is a pre-existing structure. Um, I think that comment came up at the last hearing. So, well, let's go around the table. We can come back to that. A any comments, Mark? Um, yes, I do. Actually, I'm not particularly convinced that that choice of wall block is um, the uh, the best product to put in that application. Um, we're definitely open to suggestions if you have any. Well, there's a lot of products on the market, but that style product in general, I don't think it's a good application for it. I think it's too close to the water. Okay. And I think in the long run, you're going to wind up with degradation because of it. I think the water in the off season and ice and so forth is going to work on it. Okay. And I think you're going to have it break down. And I think you're going to find in not too many years, you're going to have a problem with it. I would agree if that was salt water and it's salt fresh water, I can't see that degradation so badly. But maybe not as maybe badly, right. maybe not as quickly, but the ice will certainly raise havoc with it. Sure. Right? Um,
personally, I'd rather see another another big pine log right across that base, just like right beside it, <laughs> and then and then vegetate the top of it. There? Nope, just just one log and let it stay there forever. Um, I mean, I'd rather see vegetation right there at the base of that slope um, than uh, than have that wall back there. I think that's a a pending problem. Well, you're saying retaining walls a problem. I'm sorry. So I'm just understanding the retaining wall is a problem. Yeah, I think replacing um, replacing that wall with a segmental wall. I think ultimately you're looking for mechanical failure. Yeah. Um, and uh, like but I said, frankly, the choice of it was because it's about twice the money. The the reason for the choice in that product was the fact that build it once and it's over. Yeah, that it would it would withstand. I un I understand your thinking. Yeah. But from my own experience, I don't think the success is going to be there. I think in the long run, you're probably going to be disappointed. Would you uh, recommend going back with uh, the ties that are existing? Nope. Uh, I think vegetation right there is the best answer. It's too steep to have a hole, and it's all sand. And it's three feet from the posts that are holding that deck up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're really going to... That's the, uh, the fear I have. The deck you're is... You lose integrity on those... Post that's an existing structure. No, I well, would, that's what we're trying to. I understand, you know. but I would disagree with that. But I understand your point. Any planting would have to be, uh, you know, under the deck too. So it would have to be a uh, vigorous plant. I guess, uh, it would have to be vigorous, and it would have to be the shade. very heavy. I mean, there are plants in there now. But it's that are not showing up in this picture because that was taken in the fall. No, there, there absolutely is plant plant growth there, and I mean, just because there is shade, it doesn't mean it has shade all hours of the the day. The sun moves around as the seasons change, and there are times when it has more sun than others. Things will grow there because it's happening right now. Yeah, but, I mean, the, the, some of the plant material there are not indigenous species to the understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, I think the water was. You know, the last two springs was banging off that wall itself. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see the erosion underneath it, yeah. where it's drawing the... Well, we've had a, an immense high water, you know, fresh water rain in the last two years. It really brought lakes and ponds up as you Absolutely. Know. Yep. Yep. And, I mean, should that continue, like I say, I think you're going to find that the degradation will continue. I agree. And Nothing will work unless you build down. Right. Yep. All right? If we go down two feet, three feet... Well, no. you're going to be right down into water, so well, you're going to play. But if, uh, what I'm saying is, so you dig down as far as you can to water, all right? Yep. If you put a stone base down. Yep. Okay. We build the first layer, go up, and as long as we don't get undermining, which I think is the only problem with that wall failing, undermining would be the biggest problem in failing. If, if there's no undermining, it won't fail. Especially with, I mean, the segmented wall, I'm, uh, I don't know anything about the degradation of that wall with the uh, pond waters. All right? I know salt water will degrade it in, in, immensely. Mm -hmm. all right? uh, but with a tie wall, with dead men, with a tea backer, all right, the wall's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll rot before it'll go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. I think the timber wall would be a stronger structure. With less likelihood of movement, but uh, well, I think we're open for a timber wall. <laughs> we're open to a timber wall. I, we certainly have gotten high water the last couple of years, um, but the, the pond you know, over the long haul is not banging into that, that mm -hmm. uh, structure. Okay. Well. So, can I make mm -hmm. a quick comment? Maybe this is just completely different. Um, how would the commission feel about stuff, some sort of stone, um, natural stone, almost like not not a revetment in that it's not going to be that formal, but some sort of more of a tapered stone. Like a seawall like type thing. Yeah, but not not, not traditional, formal. more broken up, kind of informal. It might add some stability. Also, might let some vegetation grow up in between areas towards the top, and also break up potential action from waves or ice. The toughest part about that is getting the stone there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, it's, you're talking about big stone, and I mean, 
I know the Egyptians built pyramids, but <laughs> we don't have any Egyptians. <laughs> no, they had a lot of help. I mean, right. It's just an idea to try to make something oh, I, a little I bit agree. less formal, potentially, if that, you know, as, but also provide the stability and maybe even a little bit more habitat. You know. So. Yeah, it's a great idea. I, it just it doesn't. It wouldn't work everywhere. I, I understand. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts, Mark? I think that's the best alternative, but the access is the, the downside to it. And, uh, you know, the only way you could access that would be to remove the stairs and go across there with a uh, small excavator and place the stuff in very gingerly and then skedaddle. But you have to be an immense excavator because you can't get down the slope so far, so you need a boom that you know, actually be well, able to get down there, you know what I mean? No, you could do it with a small machine. and. Um, You'd carry the carry the stones down. You'd have to be limited on size. You'd yeah, have to keep them down to. Yeah, they gotta be like that. You know. Did you come down here, Mark? With it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you can. There's, it's doable. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you came around, and you take took that float out of there and that bottom stair, you could sneak across and you know place the toe stones, um, but you're still going to need a second machine to carry the carry the stock down to you. It's yeah. you know it's. A little bit treacherous. It's certainly doable. Yeah, um, no, I agree. But uh, small with smaller stone. I, I was thinking. No, not yeah, not what you, no. See, not what you see on the coast. This, yeah. these are. I'm, th I'm talking small stones. Yeah, so you get the basketball size. Space. Right. You know, yeah, something. Maybe even 24 inch round. Yeah. You know, yeah. something the two guys can roll around sure. and bar around and. Yeah. You know, have and a assist. Beach there to begin with. That's what kind of got me thinking about it. Is Yep. Yeah, and the life and expectancy there. What about water there. going in between the, if you stone and it's not like you interlocking, the cloth behind how it. does the water not permeate through it? Yeah. Yep. Underneath it and behind it. Would you allow a filter cloth behind it? I don't know why you wouldn't. Okay, I'm just asking because you, you know, I, I said that and you said swallow stone behind it. I didn't know if it was allowed or not allowed. Yeah, I don't, I don't I started know. There. Like, that, that's where I started when yeah. I went to Stonewood. I was checking out all of the material. Yeah. I was texting the pictures, and and um, you know, the, the, there was two concerns I had, not knowing what you're, you know, telling me now. One was getting the stuff down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that that stuff's heavy to heavy, mm -hmm. real heavy. And then the second piece was just not even understanding what the cost implications are versus uh, replacing the wood mm -hmm. or. That's why I ultimately was settling on the Roman Pisa that I thought it could not permeate mm -hmm. and that it was a little bit more manageable for, for a, a, a team to go down there and, and without disturbing, bringing it in and all that kind of stuff. What you're suggesting makes perfect sense. One of the difficulties with that particular stone is it's very narrow and because of the size it's not very heavy and it's going to get unstable pretty easily. I mean it's pinned and, and you're still using adhesive. But it's not that rugged in the spectrum of the other products that are available. Um, if it was a different type of stone, it would be <coughs> wall block rather, it would be more stable. Um, you know, one of the V shapes that's filled with crushed stone. There's a number of different products on the market, but again, you get the labor intensity of, of handling all that plus the excavation behind it to have room for the geofabric. Right. Um, if you can see your way into Making the natural stone work with some vegetation on top, I, th I would look at that as a, a favorable move on everybody's behalf. Just so I understand what that means. Uh, the pallets that you would get at Stonewood that are the round circles and you create a stone wall like I would see in uh, <coughs> Wall, Connecticut or something like that? No. no. I'd, be, I'd be looking at native, what is commonly called native stone. Um, a number of sources would provide it. Uh, it would be the type of thing you'd probably want to buy in bulk. I would expect you're familiar with sure. all of that. He's talking native rounds. I don't know if we call them native walls, native round walls. Um, there are people in the pond that have. There's, it. Plenty, there's plenty of it. Plenty of people that pull them out of the pond and put them yeah, on. That's yeah, that's not uncommon either. I mean, that's been done. <laughs> you know. Um, There's a lot of banks to the west that have that. Yeah. But they tend to be smaller stone. You probably want a little bit bigger. Good. Real I would ask that. if you were going to, going to allow a round native stone, 
when you were out allowed any concrete with it to hold it in place? I don't think you have a reason to put any concrete in there, and personally, I think that would be probably more of a detriment because if you do have any water that gets in, you okay, won't allow so it. You just want a dry lay wall. With a pitch, obviously. Yeah, to a degree, because I mean, yeah. it's not going to be. It can't be freestanding. I mean, it can't be vertical. You're only right. You're only going to be a couple of courses high. Yeah. Because really, you're just going to lay it on the slope, essentially. Yeah, you're going to be probably 18 to 20 courses high. Right. So it's you know a couple of courses. Sure. And the top isn't necessarily going to be perfectly flat. Right. Um. Which you know. is fine. I mean, we can make it look nice. So. Right. Yeah. You know, a little planting on top covers a multitude of sin and, you know, the irregularity yeah. all comes back to being natural. Okay, we have something to discuss. Yeah, I don't know how everybody else feels about that idea. Yeah. But. All right, thanks, Mark. It, and just, just to be sure that this is the only option we have, uh, there's no way of ever getting approved this existing tie wall to raise and remove and replace. It's not something I would support. I can't speak for anybody else. Sounds like you supported vegetation. Vegetation and natural tin. stone. Okay. All right, well, let's hear what else has to say. Jim? Um, well, yeah, I also like the idea of as much vegetation as possible and some natural stone in there. That, that seems to make sense. I want to talk about the, the west side of the project because that appears in the photos. It doesn't appear like the pond ever interacted with that structure. It was more like a terrace up upon the bank. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bulkhead or a... I'm sorry, what, what, are, you what are you referring to? The uh, vertical um, piling structure on right. the west side. So... I think that was more yeah. rotten erosion from the higher hill yeah. down rather than the pond up. It, it wasn't something that interacted with water from the pond ever. It doesn't appear. It, the pond interacted with a vegetated slope below that structure. Um, so I'm just con concerned with the straight line on the plan here. It appears like you would yeah. likely end up with a pond interacting with the bottom of what would become maybe more like a bulkhead. Um, just comparing the photo and the plan and what was on site and that straight line that is, you know the, uh, the east side of the piling structure was pretty high up on the bank um, several feet above the uh, existing wood retaining wall there so you know I, I'm not supportive of creating additional hard structures on the pond it's re it really uh, doesn't work out well for the the pond. Um. So depending on what type of wall is used, if it's jogged up to um, its original location, and then then you do have that material, the uh, soil in front that could be planted. Right. Um, that sounds. That that seems more. Yeah, we had a tree down there. We lost the tree. I, I, I the saw the, the, the trees. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. Um, um, I would love to replant the tree down there. Yeah, I, th I think that would but be. But the problem is water did impact it. That's the reason why we lost the tree. And right. know, I, don't, I, I don't think the picture shows the, the actual grade. So I don't think it's a case where they just rotted. This is a case That's where actually. that hill was impacted by, by the water. Sure, yeah, the hill eroded, but the uh, structure wasn't built at the bot at the toe of the bank. It was built up of, upon the bank. Before. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I also have no problem if you have the wall on the I guess you're referring to the west side, and then it's offset to where that is. But that is actually going to give us more beach. You know, if well, you wanted it to lay flat, yeah. That that across, that's what I'm that would be, concerned. That would be giving up beach and protecting the. That's what I'm concerned about. Is it be? It appears that. The existing situation is that there was not beach up to that wall; that there was a vegetated slope, or of you know between between a few feet and maybe eight feet. Well, um, I mean, this this picture here, yeah, before it was impacted, it's mm -hmm. a couple of things. 
there, there was a beach in there. I mean, it wasn't, you know, a sandy beach because we never brought in beach, but you can see where that tree is, and that, that, yeah. that, that would fed right into the water right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. there's a, a path there, a tree, some vegetation. Yeah. But it, it doesn't appear like the, uh, yeah. that the uh, pond interacted with that structure as an erosion control uh, protection. So that's what I'd be concerned about is this becoming a bulkhead that consistently interacts with the, with the pond like the one to the east does. Are you suggesting to pull it back up the bank a few feet or to plant? Well, or may, maybe side? leave it where it is. Um, but if, see that there's, that, that's uh, maybe three feet in elevation above the beach mm -hmm. there. So. I wouldn't want to lose all that vegetated slope between wall and the beach. Are they and proposing just to replace the same footprint? No, see, it's a, it's a straight line. Yeah, okay. So it's a straight line. With it was, yeah, it was closer to the beach, right near the stairs, but yeah. then it was further away. I'd be concerned about I, I think the challenge is how, how, do you, how, I mean, how are you going to hold it? I mean, if, even if we, because we went through this, if we, mm -hmm. the corner piece of this, you're right, is, is not straight across. It straightens out, as you can see, as this uh, piece of it. So, but if you hold it here, I, I do not believe, just from being there for four years now, that you're gonna be able to put vegetation in here. Again, we had a sizable tree that, that got washed. That's what- I think the most important place to put the vegetation would be on top of the wall now. You know, because you're gonna hold the banking Right. Anything in front of the wall, planted in front of the wall, there's nothing really growing in now except for weeds. And I would, I would say yes, there are some pond weeds also that would grow along the, the pond. Uh, and I don't know what kind they are. But there's nothing like uh, Amelanchia canadensis, there's no bayberry, there's no uh, winterberry, there's no plethora, there's no there's none of those varieties of indigenous plants that grow along ponds mm -hmm. in this area. I mean, there were some nice old red maples, things like that, that mm -hmm. got eroded by the pond and fell over. Um, I just don't see planting stuff on the lower side of the wall to benefit anything except for them to be in the pond. No, well, I got another picture here. This, is, this will show you the tree that was there pretty good sized tree and there was one it's not a burning bush but it kind of looked like a burning bush so there was that tree and a piece of vegetation there that we just get, we lost it right Two yeah, yeah. Well, well the the studying long yeah. pond is interesting you, you absolutely do not get erosion on long pond unless people are in the area you can go along the whole pond and it just doesn't happen no matter how steep it is it doesn't happen so you, you have the erosion because of the path and the fact that you don't have an intact, uh, you know, pond buffer zone there with the understory, midstory, and overstory vegetation to deal with, you know, top-down water erosion and the uh, the pond erosion. It's it's really interesting if you if you paddle around the pond and you'll you'll see everywhere there's a path there's erosion. True. Uh, then you'll see a couple hundred feet without a path, no erosion. So it, it is. Uh, Difficult to reestablish it in the situation as possible, also. Um, but I don't think uh, if you if you left it completely alone, it would erode a little bit, and the natural vegetation would actually come back. It would probably take 20 years. But you can help it along. And we're seeing projects that do that now uh, through careful planting and fabrics and whatnot. Some stones might help. But I don't think the fact that it's uh, difficult to do is a good excuse to have another hard structure on the pond. Um, those are, are really changing the whole way the wave energy works in the pond, and uh, I'm not supportive of uh, additional hard structures. I mean, I think you have every right to rebuild the one on the east side because it's existing, and that, that's the way the rules work. But uh, I don't want to see that situation repeated on the, on the west side. So like just so I understand, because I'm um, being a layman, mm -hmm. you're you're proposing that 
don't don't change it try to plant down there that's going to hold that hill and then 20 years from now the vegetation will grow up and the pond will be protected is that i'm saying if you didn't do anything the vegetation would grow back that's the situation that happened on most of the pond that wasn't vegetated that um, several decades ago but if you carefully plant it with fabrics and whatnot you can have you can make that situation happen much faster so you, you may not see any erosion at all so you're saying that <clears throat> are you saying the erosion that is there and is real mm -hmm. is has it been caused by water it's been caused by it's people? it's been caused by the lack of, of natural vegetation absolutely by water but you, you simply won't see that without if you just go, I mean, you can even almost see it on this, on this photo where your shed is. I think a lot of this erosion, not from the top down, mm -hmm. right, but because of high water in the last two years, yeah. right, has caused a lot of erosion with wind, waves, and regular boat traffic. Yeah. Right, is, I would say, a good 80% of this erosion because it wasn't like this two, before two years ago. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's absolutely yet, caused yet by the, the water. The whole place yeah. has been like that for years. Yep. Well, we, had, we did have some more extreme weather that, that brought this up, but it did not affect areas that had natural vegetation. And it, it's, it's very, it's a, very I, consistent. I, I believe you, I do understand that. So an area on the pond that was never uh, cut back way back when, all right, which is I'm sure there's a lot of area around my pond that's like that, but there's a lot of area like uh, Mr. Preston's area, and all we want to do is make it so it doesn't. And we're, we're open to planting mm -hmm. whatever you would suggest or whatever I suggest that's in the conservation grade plant materials. Um, but I think it's important to make sure that that bank stays. You know, I mean, it would be a heck of a, a terrible thing to see that whole deck and everything mm -hmm. in the water and, and nobody ever cleaned it up. You know, I mean, we'd like to make sure that it stays there. Yeah. yeah. I think to the west and to the east, I like that, the east and to the west, if, if you look at the grade between the top of bank and where the pond is, it's the two areas that are planted, it's, it's not as steep as around that deck. So it is a much steeper grade than just behind the shed, I think, is what you're talking about. <coughs> protected on the on the um, west is the same. It's uh, holding its holding its um, holding its own, but it's definitely a steep. You know, between the top of bank and the pond is a much shorter distance in this one area, and it's, <coughs> it's steeper. And that top of bank may have been made um, way back when the deck was done towards the deck, which is just creating a steep creating a steep slope that is hard to manage. Um, yeah, I think uh, Joe wants to just put back a wall where there was a wall and you can bring it into where the existing one was and then and plant. add planting planting to it behind and um, add plantings in front where there isn't where it's not beach sand. And because it, this is an area that, you know, is used, I guess, you know. Yeah, on the east side I agree that's the, the way to go about it. It's just uh, on the west side uh, th that's what I'm trying to avoid is a uh, is repeating what's already happened on the east side, which is the pond interacting with the bulkhead. So you've been to the site? Yes. Yeah. You have you've yeah. seen that those vertical um, piles of pilings mm -hmm. are holding back a considerable amount of fill? Of fill which yeah, it appears that at one point they were put in there to create a terrace kind of. Well, it looks like it was created to fill the garden. Right, exactly. That's really what it looks like. Yeah, uh, it's not a not a shoreline erosion control I, structure. I, I agree, but if we <coughs> minimize that that added fill that was put in there and planted, you know, suitable uh, pond type plantings, uh, I think we'd be benef benefiting it versus doing nothing. You, we'd be helping it. Well, we can helping the we can banking. Can from washing into the water. Yeah, I, I agree that planting you know, would be a good idea. But planting with a wall. See, if we don't put a wall there, you're gonna lose probably two to three feet of that fill because those pilings are gonna go, right? And then that fill is gonna end up in the pond. I mean, I, th I think that's inevitable. 
think we can reduce the wall and bring it, you know, jog it in like, like it seems like everybody is suggesting. So we can, uh, we'll look at that and come back with something. I think it would be interesting to see it done with natural stone, almost like placed naturally sure. with plants in between. That might be an interesting way to do it. But I'll leave my comments there. Okay, thanks, Jim. <coughs> Amy, Jeff. Just to add on to that, so maybe something to look at too um, is underneath the deck, you're going to, it looks like maybe a place with a wall of some sort. But if you're high enough above, the water of the pond, you're not going to have daily interaction. Maybe other than if you wanted more of a natural solution to help hold stability, maybe something like fiber rolls or something like that that are kind of buried that can be then planted, which are going to provide a little additional stability. You got to anchor them pretty good, otherwise they're going to kick. They'll kick out. But um, where that the more the vertical um, timbers are here, maybe just something to look at is, is some sort of a soft solution that taper that goes from the stairs and then tapers into the banking, giving you some stability, but also making it so it's not a hard structure. So I'm happy to talk about that more. But I don't even know if that's feasible up there, but I think if you usually if you stay above the water and you don't expose them and they're, they, you can cover them, that prevents against, that will help prevent against major erosion of that. I think in the, uh, under the deck, you'd certainly want to just, you know, replace with, so, sounds yeah, like the right. stones will, will work yeah. and then planting above that. Maybe you could taper into something, either keep with the stones if that's the purview of yourself to the commission across and kind of go in and up a little bit or Taper into a soft solution, or taper into some more of a soft solution. Thanks, Amy. Do you have a follow-up comment there, Mark? I do. Um, another consideration on the uh, on the uphill side of the uh, piles that are there right now might be a consideration to dig some of that material out and lay that slope right back up the way it was originally and get rid of that terrace effect and then utilize the spotting of some stone and planting in that area to, uh, to stabilize it. But we, I think we'd be happy to do that. You know, remove those piles, reduce yeah. the grade. Right, uh, right. Put some, if we're allowed to put some stone there like the other side of the stairs. Same idea. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more sporadic, I think, is what we're talking about. More of a two and a half foot wall than a three. Well, not a wall per se, but I think more like a bank, banking placement with a with a you know pitch to it. It's not going to be like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be like that, and mm -hmm. uh, you can fill in with some stone in the small crevices of it. Mm -hmm. Put some filled cloth behind it. Mm -hmm. Plant above it. If anything grows through and in through the stone, then great. Right. 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 Yeah, I agree. Stan, any comments? Yeah, um, <laughs> just trying to summarize a couple of things. One thing, I agree with Jim, because if you look at this bank that we're talking about there, if that was never left alone, whoever did whatever they did, it would be natural, just like behind the shed, and that's what Jim was talking about. But because something had been done, that's gone away. And I don't know how you'd ever get back to that, other than, like, said, like Jim said, maybe over 20 years. But in the meantime, what are you doing to, to, to try and help them? But I want to clarify the wall. So under the deck, this is the stone wall we're talking about again. Mm -hmm. And that would give the support that you need for the deck with the pillar for the, the uh, posts and everything. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't have an issue there. Okay. And then on this wall, you were still, what kind of wall were you originally thinking? I, of? I think like uh, pilings? Or Mark uh, suggested doing the same thing on the right side as the left side. So with rock with and reducing then, the grade of no, but I mean originally you were gonna we were gonna do the same thing all the way along now maybe up to the different rock and then with plantings of some sort to help to Just restore that, that slope back to right. more natural. And I think you know like a, a, a plant like plethora, which is prevalent all the way around the pond, has a really good root base uh, and is a very good stabilizer of banks uh, and. 
joking into a flower that, you know, it's a, it's a nice plant. Because I really do agree with Jim. He, he taught me this. If you, whenever I've looked around Long Pond, wherever the erosion is, is where there's a little beach or yeah, whatever it's been invaded. cleared out. That's and right. wherever it was left natural, the roots from the trees or the <coughs> shrubs around it are holding that bank right in place. You don't see it cutting out like it does. I think the idea would be to put the plantings in to bring it back. Just all this talk is going to be more natural than when Joe bought the property. You know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I think we, yeah, we, I think we need a, something in between to try and keep it in place, but also to help speed it, up, speed the process along too. Thank as far as that's all I have. Thanks, Tim. I just have a couple of questions. You're also going to remove the shed and rebuild it. Yes, the idea would be to raise it because, because, so it's safe with water like we had the last couple of years. Just br bring it up one foot Put it up. so it's not getting flooded. It should be, yeah. What, what's the foundation for it now? <coughs> what's the, uh, I think it's just on blocks. What's, what's the foundation on? You're gonna put blocks to raise it as well or are you gonna drive pylons or run to uh, either, either blocks or tubes, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't go to that extreme. No. Just be on, uh, just set on blocks, I think. Blocks? It's only uh, 64 square feet. Yeah. So that would be a prior building water, permit or anything. Water action underneath it or anything. It's, you know, it happened last year. It hasn't happened probably in 50 years. <laughs> we we're dealing with extremes right now. In the no. 2000s, we couldn't find water. You know, yeah. now we got too much really water. Nice to and just worry, you get ice underneath that, and it's going to pull your foundation right up from underneath the thing. It could happen. Um, I mean, this this is in is in a um, pretty stable vegetated area. I don't I don't. It didn't move with last year's storms. I don't see it moving. But we could certainly secure it down if, if the commission yeah. wants that. When when yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you work on that with them, right? It's not a size structure that would need a building permit. No. 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 But we could certainly. The, the down pine tree behind it. I think that's on your plan, right? Just that's to leave a retaining wall. But you're gonna leave that here. What, leave what there? Down to pine tree. Uh, yes. Uh, we'd like to. That's what you originally you said. I know that at the last behind. meeting you had said that. Yeah, yeah said it's that. totally. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's what Mark said, leave the pine tree there. I know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So that won't, that won't be in the way of the new shed or anything like that. Right? Uh, same footprint as the other. Nope. Yep. New shed would be the same footprint. Okay. To follow up on Ernie's comment about the shed, is there any space to pull the shed back a little bit? Maybe. That can be done. And, and don't cut me the, no, I don't know how to close it, actually. There may be a little opportunity. Right. That might help you with some future impacts. Yeah. So I, I think we've got some pretty good direction for you guys to modify your uh, design with a stone wall. I, I do have the, that ongoing concern about is this structure authorized? And I so, will make sure I look at right. that. It's, um, it's a long time ago, 1978, so if it's pre-existing, then it's, it's up good to go. If it's not, then we have to ask a question. And if it's unauthorized, then we have to talk about mitigation. So I do think some structure is necessary. I think the stone wall is a good, you know, good option to explore, but I, I, we do have to understand whether it's an authorized structure or not. Any thought on the um, the size of the vegetative planting above the wall? Would it be 10 feet? What what kind of dimension are you looking at? Or thinking about? I think the way from the pond, 10 feet from, from the, the top of the wall, top of, slope. Top of stones. Yep, top, top of slope. Stones. How, how far would that vegetation go? I think it would be the bare area, right? I, I would say whatever you suggest. Well, I think it's what what do you envision being there? Are you talking about on the right hand side there? Uh, uh, say you replace those wood pilings yeah, in, with, in that with footprint the way, with this, the stone. The description that yeah. James and Mark were saying. Right. What kind of vegetation we would put there? Yeah, would, would, would you have the entire bare area? Would you have, what kind of footprint would you have for native plantings? Well, I mean, I think we'd... I would say you'd go, you'd go up... Disturbed area. 10 to 15 feet from yeah. where top of New Orleans, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
don't think it's necessary to go into the area that's, well, some of the moss area, but not all the way to the top, because now if we get to the top, now we're creating a screen which nobody wants to see through to right. see the pond. Yeah. You know? So if we can keep it to an area where it's not uh, in line of sight, mm -hmm. I think we can go as far as that would enable. It's showing about 15 feet between the wall and on the site plan, which what's, you know, the edge of that uh, moss, which I have marked as a garden area, which okay. hasn't been garden in a long time. I'm happy to. Certainly filling that plan in. Plan to and help. Uh, we'd appreciate it. I mean, uh, and then as for uh, at the deck area, I'd have to leave it up to Peter to say what, at some point you're under the deck and you're so protected from light, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a massive now. plant underneath there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so both please hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really good. It's, I mean, if you, if you, we'll plant a few more of them if you want. <laughs> yeah. It's that just not indigenous, you know. Um, right. Well, I, I think 15 feet with stones would be a, a big improvement over what's there now. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, please make some modifications. Do you want to come back to the next meeting or meeting afterwards? What works for you? We'll continue to the next meeting. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. I think we can draw up something that you'll yep. be happy with. If you could find any neighbors that have photographs or anything that will help us document. The problem is that the neighbors around there have, yeah. you know, it's just there's way more that's been allowed right. uh, than what we're wanting. Right. Uh, so it's very, I think it's kind of difficult to take those pictures. Yeah, I, know. I think we're trying to be, like, or, or you people are trying to make us be the new wave of being a little more conservation conscious. You know, We're trying. Which is, which is good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if, if we do discover that this is an unauthorized structure, I don't think it's a deal breaker because I think you need something there. We would just be talking about some mitigation, I, I think. That would be my. Right. That would be my preference. Yep. So, OK. Well, then, anything else? Any comments from the audience? Okay, well then I, I move we continue until September 5th. Fourth. Fourth, sir. Second. Second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ideally, I would uh, plan by the Thursday prior, which gives you a week and a day. But I happily review them with you as well. And you want so to we can get. Also? Yes, that's right. Planting plan. And you the wall plan, the planting plan. And if you want to send them to me electronically to review or come in and sit down with me, just let me know. Okay? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for Four Shady Drive, proposal for new dwelling and appurtenances. They have requested a continuance until September 4th. Uh, I move we approve that. Second. Second that by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we have before us the notice of intent for Allen's Harbor Yacht Club, 371 Lowell County Road, proposal for deck and patio expansion walkways, handicap parking, ramp and shed expansion. Good evening. Uh, David Little from Ryder and Wilcox. I'm here with Katrine Higgins from Wilkinson Ecological Design and also Steve LeBrant from WEB and Phil Cheney, the designer of the proposed improvements for the project. And then also uh, John Blue and Richard Harris are in the back row. They are two members of the Yacht Club that might be able to answer questions that, that we can't. So I, um, I, I provided you with a lot of material. I'm going to turn it over to Phil because Phil's been the primary designer of what's proposed here. And, and then we could listen to you. Comments on the restoration and planting plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. This is Phil Cheney, landscape designer. Been working with the Yacht Club for a little while uh, on some improvements uh, that you can see on the landscape plan that you have as part of your packet. Uh, currently, uh, right now, there's an existing deck up at the first floor level with the walkout basement underneath. Uh, with a concrete patio underneath that walk, that deck up on the upper level. And uh, the, the 
club would like to expand that deck. Uh, this uh, existing concrete walk that runs along the south edge of the building, facing the lawn, facing the water, it's five feet wide. So we're looking at the idea of extending the deck uh, over that uh, existing five foot and then another three feet for a total of eight foot in that direction. And then about another eight foot, eight inches approximately to the west as well towards the parking lot. Reconfiguring the stairway, uh, enabling better handicap access uh, from the lower parking area, and replacing the concrete, the solid concrete underneath the deck with uh, pavers. Additionally, I'd like to expand, uh, as we're replacing the concrete with pavers, expanding that into a patio on the lower lawn level. The lawn area is a large open uh, turf area that's been used for functions of many different times over the years. And they'd like to get a little bit more permanent surface, flexible to keep tables out there, a fire pit, and to relocate the grilling area. There's an old barbecue that you can see on the plan that's within the 50-foot buffer zone. We'll be taking that out and revegetating that area and repositioning some new retaining walls into the bank outside of the buffer zone uh, for the grilling. Uh, and then the table area that would be creating in there. So that's about a 24 by 70 foot approximate uh, patio in that area for large functions. Connecting this deck and the, the club itself to the dock down below is an existing concrete walk uh, that's from the lower level as well as from the upper level uh, on the deck. And we're looking to replace all of that existing poured concrete with concrete uh, pavers or some other modular paver. So we'll be gaining some permeability there. Want to establish some permanent uh, handicap spaces at that lower level. In order to do that functionally, we're suggesting uh, some extra permeable uh, pavers to define those spaces so it can be used for handicap parking. Uh, the permeable town hall pavers uh, by Unilock are got extra large joints, so they're exceptionally permeable. Also in that general area, uh, we're taking out uh, the existing large cherry tree. It's a Kwanzan exotic cherry uh, that's really encroaching on the deck space and as we expand it would really uh, not fit in. Replacing that with some native trees, uh, some good side 8 to 10 foot, 5, 8 to 10 foot uh, multi-trunk shad blows in that same area, un underplanted with um, some hydrangeas and uh, also a red cedar. So we're adding six native trees back in place of that ornamental cherry uh, in that zone. Also, in this, we're removing one pitch pine, an area we would like to increase the size of the existing shed adjacent to the parking area. I think you can see that on the plan. And then included off to a little bit there, I'd like to just to upgrade the entrance, which falls within the floodplain as well, uh, expanding the, the, the girth of it a little bit to enable boats to uh, trailers to come in and out. Uh, upgrade it a little bit aesthetically with some some stone walls and signage and some new plantings along that area, as well as a, a large cobblestone apron to replace a lot of the asphalt apron that you're seeing currently. I think that in general covers uh, all the improvements. Uh, I'll perhaps have Katrin talk about the, sure. the mitigation. Sure, thank you. Uh, so for the record, Katrin Higgins from Wilkinson. And our proposed work that we've shown on our restoration plan and our land management plan serve as mitigation for the proposed construction activities that Phil just described. And really we're focusing on providing enhanced stormwater protection and a more robust vegetated buffer compared to what's currently existing on the site. So if you see on our restoration plan, we're proposing invasive plant, uh, invasive plant removal and native plant restoration over 15,000 just over 15,000 square feet of the property. And that's really identified on our plan by that green hatch and then the, the black and white um, dot hatch also. Um, besides the very visible dense stand, if you were out on the site, you first see that frag Phragmites, the state listed invasive Phragmites, which is covering about 4,000 square feet of the overall project area. Uh, the other invasive and non-native species found here include porcelainberry, autumn olive, shrub honeysuckle, vine honeysuckle, and, and bittersweet. And as you, as you know, these are really aggressive species. They've really visibly taken over and outcompeted the native species that should be in a lot of, in, in this, throughout this whole area. Uh, the, really the only areas where they're still prominent 
native species still existing are just along the toe of the bank and in the northwest western end of the project area where you'll see species such as high tide bush, beach plum, Virginia rose, and bayberry. But these overall these species are really aggressive and it's clear that they are out competing and have out competing the native species that should be on the site to provide that wildlife habitat that is needed for, for wildlife. So we'll, of course we're proposing to remove the non-native vegetation through both mechanical removal and hand removal. There's really good access uh, for low impact equipment through the parking area and on the, the existing lawn area. So we would be using low impact equipment like a dingo in those areas. And then of course hand work closer to the water and the salt marsh. Uh, so then immediately after that, we would be seeding the entire area uh, with a native seed mix that's shown on our, on our site plan. The exception to that is we, we found that when we're dealing with Phragmites, any Phragmites that's existing within a salt marsh, we don't seed, we don't plant that area because the native seed bank is still there intact. So it's just about removing the Phragmites in, the, in that location of the Phragmites, uh, the existing Phragmites in the salt marsh, we would remove the Phragmites and that, that existing seed bank comes up on its own and, and you don't need to, 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 to do much. The area of the Phragmites upland, however, we would be proposing to, to um, plant. And that is about 1,100 1, square feet of the Phragmites we would be planting. So you'll see on our plant, on our restoration plan that we're specifying shrubs primarily um, focused on a maritime shrubland, arrowwood, bayberry, sweet fern, beach plum, black chokeberry, Carolina rose and some marsh elder and swamp rose mallow down closer to the water. All species that uh, really should be, pl should be growing in this area and will really thrive in the conditions that, that are here along Allen Harbor. Um, overall, just to kind of reiterate, we're proposing si over 15,000 15, 15, square feet of mitigation for the proposed activities. And this is all, all in an effort to provide enhanced benefits for stormwater protection and also for habitat uh, for, for available for wildlife along Allen Harbor. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any comments for us, Amy? Sure. Um, we had a couple of meetings prior to plans being, being submitted for this, so I had the chance to look at this property very carefully. Um, so you are requesting a variance from the 60 foot no new structure regulation. And that in comes in terms of both your um, parking area for handicap, which I view um, it's currently gravel. You're going to something a little bit more stable to provide the adequate, ad adequate handicap base. I don't see any issue with that. Um, when we met on site, um, you know, informed you of the 60 foot no new structure regulation and um, of course it's your right to request a variance from that and provide mitigation. Um, I think there is a possibility of keeping structures outside, new structures outside the 60 foot no disturb zone. Um, I kind of sketched where 60 feet is on the plan here and there's plenty of area um, maybe to potentially change up some patio area to still allow the square footage that you want, but to keep it outside the 60 foot no new structure and not have to request a variance from that. Um, and then in terms of um, the restoration plan, I think um, in general, it, um, it's very good, but I'd like a little bit, personally I'd like a little more specifics on it. You have an area of 15,200 square feet and you state, you know, 85 shrubs along with a lot of grasses is going into that. However, the plan, it kind of just says, you know, the green area is the restoration area. We don't really have a sense of where things are going. So, and again, Wilkinson has an excellent track record. You do wonderful work. However, we just want to ensure that anybody who does this work sure. does it accordingly and that, um, we're not getting all the, most of the plantings in one area versus we want to make sure everything is spread out. Um, and I think 
a larger number of your shrubs um, would be something I would be looking for to create more of a dense buffer again to prevent people from going down the banking, um, but have a little bit more of a densely planted buffer. Or maybe it, it, maybe it is densely planted based on the size of what's going to grow here, but I just can't really visualize what that's going to look like. Um, let's see. Yeah, I would encourage, and I think it's um, great that the Yacht Club is going towards um, not using any more treatment on their property and is going to um, basically any reseeding that they have to do go to um, a natural seed mix and over time that will all be, you know, that will all turn to native Cape Cod lawn. They do have irrigation. That's not proposed to change. I think it's a good thing for the site, um, but just the elimination of chemicals from a very large area is an improvement to the water quality. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy. Mark, do you have any comments? Uh -huh. Not at the moment. Okay. Jim? Um, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of good things proposed here. Um, it appears that, that none of the mitigation is uh, replacing existing hardscape or lawn. It's all in natural areas that are uh, have invasive species. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. That's, a, that's my, my one comment is that, you know, I, I could even be open to the 60-foot uh, variance, but uh, it would be nice to see some lawn going away with, to make up for that new hardscape um, to, to become a natural area. So that, that's my comment. Thank you. Stan? <coughs> yeah, just one more. I mean, that 60 foot area, it looks like just a little section of the patio on that right hand side. It's, 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 it's a functional area. width area, yeah. Right through the blue one. So this yeah, it's a, a little bit more than what I was thinking. Yeah, it's a functional width um, on that area, really. And uh, in our minds, we you know we're replacing turf lawn with it, so it didn't seem like to be like a huge issue. So that's why we're, we're looking for the variance on that. It would be useful to have it there in that location be able to fit the grilling area and everything in there outside of the buffer zone yeah, where it is like now. So, the old grill right. out. so it seemed like a pretty good trade off. Well, it seems at least one person so far seems to be amenable to a variance if you're going to give up some little bit of lawn area, additional lawn area. Right. Okay. And going back to Amy's comment, no, all of the plants that you're already talking about were in these two areas up here, not along the bank. No? Okay, I thought this was all the planting over here. So our service? I can't do it like this. Yeah. I can provide you with a copy of the screen. You have it right here. Oh, okay. Our work focuses on the area. It's the screen right here. Okay, so that's where, going back to what Amy was saying, just to get a better idea of where, where it is. Okay. So how Bill's plan is very specific with locations. Um, something similar for, for the bank. Right. And so we know for things. Yeah, we can do that. For, for this, and we typically do that, but right. for this project, especially with the grade change and how thick it is, we thought that this would be, um, this would give us a little bit of flexibility at the time of planting yeah. to figure out what makes sense where they, the, you know, the Carolina Rose would do best versus the Marsh Elder. Um, but I hear what you're saying. Or maybe just some, maybe not, what I'm thinking too is maybe not the exact same area, but for either break it up a little bit more into area so it's not the whole 15,000 square feet and say in this area we're going to do this and change the looping or something. Okay. We can always make a note to saying subject to field change with permission of the conservation commission or agent or something. Because of course we want things to be planted where they're going to do well. I have nothing else. Thanks, Dan. Ernie? Uh, the proposed handicap parking is going to be done in the park. I say it's it's a, a permeable paver. It's got a special type that's designed for that with extra large joints so that yeah, so you know, build the problem. For walkers and all that sort of thing. No, it's, it's, this is what it's for is, you know, to be able to use it in this kind of space. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, compared yeah. to the gravel that's there now, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Do you have an uh, irrigation system in, the, in here now? Uh, no, just the existing lawn irrigation system is there. Um, okay, so it's underground, right? Yes. Yes, that would be coming out. No, that would be remaining. We, so there, there's a plan to um, change the type of lawn over to a low input lawn to comply with your, your new policy of no fertilizers. Um, so we would like to keep the irrigation to promote that change, which, which I, I understand from Wilson, sir, they can speak to it. It's going to take four or five years to, mm -hmm. to, to get this to over to a lawn that will be fully compliant with your policy. And, and our land management plan talks about that on page three about how we propose to spread seed that later seed mixing. <coughs> my, my concern is in this particular area with an underground irrigation system that's going to promote a lot of runoff I think into the power. And I'm not sure we'll, I, I, I certainly wouldn't be in favor of retaining that because uh, that's the whole purpose behind having a low maintenance lawn is that it is drought resistant. If I, if I can maybe chip in, the idea is to help to help transition to that lawn. No, I, I, I say if we took the irrigation out now. No, right. Number three we, over right. on your on your uh, okay. on your notes talks about a temporary automated above ground system. That's for the right. mitigation area. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah. I would propose that that same system be used on the lawn area. Well, well, I think that might be given in any in an air, any property that would be tough because it's a tripping hazard, but I think particularly where there's a lot of people using this, children and things, that would form a, a pretty substantial tripping hazard and, and you know, get disconnected and stuff. When we're doing that system, we're very careful that we're placing that, that system, because it's above ground, we're placing it in areas that people aren't going to be walking through. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying, but I think it might make sense to as Bill was saying, to keep the system the way it is now and focus that temporary system would where it, no one's going to be. Would a condition stating that it be removed after the establishment of the new? Where, where it's already in place put. now, that would make sense. Right. And then after, you say, what, three years? Um, the life of the order, or do you think it would be? Yeah, wouldn't you just disconnect it? You don't have to remove it. We would have been. We would just cut it and abandon it and remove the yeah. remove the sprinkler system. Okay. I'd be comfortable with that. Okay. Thank you, Ernie. Um, any comments from the audience? Uh, just to if you could identify you yourself, please. Yeah, Peter Whitney, 364 Rural County. Um, just to get my bearings, the handicap, is that where mm -hmm. the flagpole is now? Uh, nearby. This is the flagpole flag here. Oh, this flag right there. This is within the existing parking lot. Parking lot, lot there. Okay. All okay. right. And the tree that's coming down is parked yeah, right about there. Here. It's yeah. about, what'd you say, is that yes. about 20 feet high, maybe? Probably, I yes. I speak to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 the no, cherry no. tree, it's around 20, 25 20 feet. Yeah. And the trees that you said are going to be about five? No, they're, they're eight to ten feet to start, and they will grow up around 15 to 20. How about those if they're going to go over the sidewalk there that you walk on? No, no, they're, they're more of an upright grower. That's why we're, we're planting more of them in the clumps. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this question is about this the part we've talked about, or everything? What's within, yes, what's within commission jurisdiction? We were told that by 
If, if I could explain, yes, the, the trees are planted on either side. We have hydrangeas, which will maybe mature out at around 10 foot height. Mm -hmm. And the thunderhead pine is a dwarf cultivar of the black pine, which will maybe grow about six to eight feet. Six to eight, okay. So it doesn't really show that that was a I'm concerned vote. about that because during Hurricane Bob, I had two boats from the harbor in the yeah. front yard. We just had a tornado, which happens every <laughs> so often. Yep. probably just didn't, um, whoever it was, we probably just didn't know that it was a dwarf. Okay. And also the thing that we need to go what about the sign? There's something about a, a 31 inch wall and then it's a sign. Is the sign going to be higher than that above it? I'm not sure what uh, the plan is there. Yeah. It hasn't, hasn't exactly been determined. Uh, it would be, um, there were existing signs there now would probably be similar in size too, but the idea would be to have it lowered down on the wall profile okay. is more the intention now, the but high enough to be visible. Uh, I believe I got 32 inches. We're figuring there, I think we put that in. I think it was 32 inches high was the expected height. So Except for the neon. <laughs> <laughs> we get enough from the lights coming out of the bar. I do have a question, maybe more directly to the people there. So you're putting this handicapped parking there, but that's where the boats are stored during the winter. Does that mean the handicapped parking will not be used? Well, we can use 24 7. You have smaller, uh, you, you can still, you don't put a boat at the handicapped spot. Yeah. Oh, but there's going to be additional also, parking. That, that parking lot typically will fill with boats. We have much uh, mm -hmm. less and smaller functions in the winter time. We try to use that side parking lot where we have uh, three handicapped There's only one boat that is impacted, and we have lost space on the um, Richard Harris boat. You know, just, um, we have lost space due to the encroachment of all the non-native plantings, which uh, are in the closer. Uh, southwest right. corner of the parking lot, um, yeah, two thousand square feet, to the tune of several hundred square feet. Uh, there was a uh, a town sign with the four by four post is still there, and it used to be no clamming beyond this point. The sign is gone, but the boat people were in our parking, our, our, our gravel parking lot, which you can find buried underneath all the encroaching stuff, goes up to that sign post. We lost probably, as I said, several hundred square feet, and we're losing more all the time as the stuff continues to grow in. And as far as along the street, there's a tremendous amount of safety hazard from trying to pull out of our parking lot. So by making the entrance a little bit wider, there'd be better visibility by reducing the type or re removing the types of plantings that are there now, which are not native for the most part. Um, we will be improving our uh, safety ability for people to address it, even just driving down lower county road. Okay, well, if I can summarize a little bit, I think we had some concern expressed by a couple members about the, um, the, the mitigation in, in terms of the patio expansion, and I think I tend to agree with them. I, I think the, the um, handicapped spaces is a suitable variance, given our language. That, that makes sense to me. I think the expansion of the patio into the no-disturb zone is um, a little different, and so I don't really view the invasive plant uh, removal as mitigation for that type of activity. And so, um, just one second. So I think that's something I'd like to see some, maybe some adjustments on. Can you either reduce that patio space uh, so it doesn't come into the 60, 
or can you provide some mitigation that I think is something more substantial for that type of activity? And that would be reducing developed space in the zero to 60. And so if we were to, um, as, as, a, as, as a suggestion, that if we were to um, eliminate uh, lawn adjacent to where we're proposing to do the invasive plant removal, would that be considered mitigation to allow us to go up to the 50? I, I think that's something we've approved before. And it's something it's you know going typical. The invasive plant control was fantastic. It's great for habitat, but we haven't really viewed it strictly for new structures in the no disturb zone. So I, I think it's all beneficial. And but that's and that's my preference. You know we've heard something similar from others. Um, I don't know how people feel about just saying no variance for the patio versus some more significant mitigation. Um, I think there's a great opportunity for. It. Improvements with some mitigation uh, at the edge of the lawn to be so. I, I mean, I, I would. I think, I think some of that lawn could be given up, and and also too, we are eliminating some of that hardscape within the 50. At this point, with the existing grilling area, right. so that's part of that as well to keep in mind. And, and also, is there any place where you can, you know, where you're planting to to plant seed, where the frag is right now? Is there any way that we can plant um, some native plants that allow a little more structure and diversity? I know that you're looking to do that along the, where the wetland is, but is there any way we can do that a little further up as well? Um, I'm just worried about, what, you know, not avoiding encroachment of the no disturb zone in the name of invasive plant management. So you, you end up with more lawn instead of more habitat. Um, that, the hibiscus mashuda that we're, we have on our plan right here is a, a good plant to okay. plant in there. That would, I think, be what we have. So I think we're close. And a comment from the audience? Uh, I was just going to uh, comment with regard to the potential to give up some additional lawn space inside of, of the area that's going to be replanted. So you would be agreeable to that. I don't know what to extent that. But I mean, that's what I okay. So I guess we, we do want to see plans before we yeah, we move on this. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, yeah, a question about the uh, the pavers in the uh, patio. It doesn't specify anything about permeability. Uh, uh, there's, they're going to be dry laid. You know, they're not going to be set in mortar. You know, that kind of, so. Yeah, but that, that's not really, it's not permeable. Um, the, the pavers you got on the outside edge that replace the walk, those are an actual permeable paver, but it's not doesn't say that up here into the plan and under the deck it's specified as travertine is that travertine going to be an overlay on the existing concrete or is it going to no. be removed and dry no, it's to replace concrete so uh, that there and again there's this different degrees of permeability as you know with pavers mm -hmm. and yes the ones we're using for the handicap space are extra permeable mm -hmm. as they're in the gravel area there now the others there they all have some permeability uh, there even though they're going to be a little bit tighter yeah. It's not, it's not completely impermeable like the poured concrete that's there now. Not 100 percent, but it's, it's you know, it's yeah, pretty it's tight. It, we're replacing a lot of poured concrete mm -hmm. with pavers that are going to have some permeability. Oh, I understand, oh, and I think that's a great feature. Um, but I'd like to see a little more increase in the permeability in the patio, and I'd like to see the uh, a choice made on the particular paver to verify that it would handle the water. rather than just dumping it off onto the lawn. Other comments, Mark? That's about it. Okay. From the audience? Um, when you say yes. more permeability, from what I understand, the process to do what we're doing is to dig down and put in about six or eight inches of gravel, inch to two inch, and then smaller gravel on that, pack it, and then we'll be using Permeable pavers, in the truest sense, have a different base than conventional pavers. Underbase? Underbase. There's actually a, a fabric and a layer of crushed stone. You've got to give the water some place to go. It would definitely be right. multiple inches of crushed stone. I mean, six to eight inches or more. 
there's two di there's two different sets of specs okay. one for permeability one for structural so my question is which is it that's going to be out front say, and another when we come back with our new plans another possibility might be to do a, a drainage trench along the border that would intercept it from the lawn that would be beneficial that, yeah okay because we, we may be talking about a stone paver and so forth there mm -hmm. that would not you know meet those tight technical Understood. There. So if we went with a trench along the edge, that yeah, would be something to absorb the water or catch the water sure. would be would be beneficial. Yep. Very good. I guess one last question for me on um, what's your expectation for the chance to have either salt marsh or beach grass come into where the frag is now? You're going to take all that frag out. You're going to plant it. Is there any potential to have those plants colonize that to creep up? I think the, the salt marsh tends to stick to the, the, the contours and the elevations at where it wants to go. So I feel like it, you can see where it's growing currently, so it probably wouldn't go up mm -hmm. higher. And you can't, I yeah. can tell about beach grass, I could beach grass might. We, we could even plant some beach grass, which I don't think we, we're doing right now. But That's my wonder if there's some section there where beach grass might do well with plantings. Yeah. My only concern with that would be is that beach, American beach grass likes a constant sediment source in mm -hmm. terms of wind blown sand, and then it does well for a few years, but if it doesn't have a constant source of wind blown sand, mm -hmm. it'll peter out. Okay. Um, but maybe something like high tide, which tends to like to start to creep up those slopes. Um, so, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, so I, I don't know what you're saying is, mm -hmm. is correct. Yeah, that's maybe we can look at our putting a little bit of augmentation. Yeah, if you could work with them to do that. Do you want to come back in the next meeting, or what would you? We would, we would like to come back on the fourth if we could. Yeah. Okay. Any further comments? Well, then I move that we uh, approve a continuance until September fourth. Second. Second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I haven't heard or seen a lot of success with that type of frag removal. So I, well, they're talking about you know, herbicide. Yeah. yeah. It seems like it comes back. No, I mean, we're just trying like to improve the project. It's very persistent. Yeah. But there's a project on Muddy Creek I've been watching for four years. And that's yeah. Showing it's even better yeah. after four years. Of there's, oh, there's still some frags. Is the tide range helping too? I don't know. Uh, but it is. There's cattails and Spartina mm -hmm. growing in where it was pure. And they're still frag yeah. popping. Wow. They're still yeah. treating it. So. What will you do with yourself? Yeah, the salt can help too. Yeah. 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 Down Red River Beach is a place they put culverts in. And it, it's pushed back to frag. It's really done nice. <laughs> But it's slow and it's incremental, and you know, you can't tell the first couple of years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like a, a primitive thing where the frag was here, and there's a, you know, a little bit of that. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have a notice of intent for 10 Chase Street proposal for a pier ramp, float, and vista pruning. Barbara Thalls next to me, the applicant for this proposed dock on Herring River. Um, what I did bring with me tonight, I'm not sure if, if I ever showed you guys this or not, but this is an example of a 12 inch diameter Pearson piling. So you can pass it around or just look at it if you want. It's a little heavy. Um, this is the HP version. So the outside. 
upside down there remains the same, they beef up the inside, so it could be rigid. Uh, you can see how slippery it is on the outside. And it's not filled or anything? No, that's why they drive so easily and why literally two people can carry a pylon. Yeah, I, I, see the I don't, yeah, I don't remember where they ever. Uh, yeah. Is that the same one that was used on that dock out near the end of the river? Yep. In fact, I'll explain in the design. There's one difference in this design, and I'll get I'll get to that. But we were supposed to have two pilings at the end of that dock, and uh, through a communication snafu, Pearson didn't tell me that, and I gave him the design before we presented it to the board. So we came back and I said, well, there's supposed to be two pilings in it. I said, well, what are you going to do about that now? You know, so that piling is at the end of that dock, filled with concrete with a 30-foot helical anchor right down the middle of it. Hmm. Shouldn't go anywhere. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Does anybody else want a um, big copy? Yeah, I, yep. I wouldn't mind one right here. Thanks. I, have, I have some others with me, too. So we'll let all right, we'll let you get settled here. The ones you guys have have the, have the purple line out in the water, right? That spans from one dock to the two adja adjacent docks? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the, correct, that's the correct plan to use. I have some if you need them. Yeah, but more important that it has the, the, the purple or magenta line out yes, from extending from one dock to the other. Okay, great. All right, then I'll, I'll begin. Okay, so again, proposed dock on Herring River, uh, quite similar to the recently approved dock. Um, monopile design, except there are two piles at the end, uh, it, per the manufacturer's recommendation. It's a, a four foot by 65 foot pier that extends uh, 53 feet beyond mean high water uh, which happens to be nine feet shorter than the other, and I'll just refer to it as the other pier. Um, again, a monopile design. This one doesn't step down, and the reason uh, was because in some cases, um, by the time you step, when you start at this lower height, by the time you step down, you're actually a little too close to the water, and then a minor storm surge floods the whole dock. So uh, the applicants wanted to keep it <coughs> at, at the same height. I just wanted to give you that reason because we think about all these things during the design process and, and that's how the final product ends up in front of you. Um, the dock has a, a typical 3 by 18 foot ramp and a 10 by 20 foot float. There is two and a half feet on the uh, landward side of the float. There is uh, 5.2 feet on the seaward side of the float. It drops off very quickly. Um, how many people have made it to the site? Were the two PVC pipes still there? Just one. one. Just one. one was. I staked that twice. The first one's left in a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I explained we're on the it, site today. Yeah, it's the so outside. One that was still up. And it's the outside of the float. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, at some point, I promise I'll go back with a rake and I'll try to retrieve them if they're in the area. Okay. I'd like prefer to clean up after myself. Um, the the. The decking is uh, proposed to be grading all of the way out. And um, as it meets the land, uh, pr uh, we're proposing some steps on the side at grade uh, steps, typical at grade steps, just so you can traverse the bank slope uh, down to the beach. Um, if you, you I'm, su I'm sure you saw the existing like boardwalk that's there. That would obviously come out. And that was just there to facilitate access at this point in time. Um, the pile is a 23-foot span, so they span the marsh completely. It does kind of make the end look a little weird because we have just a short section, but I felt that that was better than evening up the spans and putting a pile in the marsh. So again, that's how my brain works in coming up with these uh, designs and arrangements for you. Um, for the moment, anybody have any questions about the, the dock itself? Okay, so I'll move landward. Um, and, and the, and the at-grade steps. Um, oh, I do want to point out, so there's this solid-filled kind of bulkhead thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that or not. It's the remains of some timbers in the water. Uh, it's probably this tall. It doesn't extend, extends a little bit above mean high water, but for the most part, you don't see it. 
the, the Thals have only owned the property for two years. We have no idea where it came from, how long it's been there. Uh, there's no work proposed to either remove it or augment it. Or it it's just there, and we have no idea why. I don't know what purpose it served or anything. Um, and I looked way back in aerials, and I couldn't find anything. So it's a, it's a blind date. I don't know why it was there. Um, so moving back, there's a kayak rack proposed kind of in the woods off to the right-hand side. It, if you saw the two stakes for that, uh, it's off to the side. It's in the resource area, the bank slope, so it's not a structure in a buffer zone, and it's, it'll just be a freestanding rack to hold uh, to anywhere between two and four kayaks. Um, <clears throat> and it's in an area of what I call duff vegetation. It's not a heavily vegetated area. It's kind of a little clearing off to the right if you saw it, and that seemed like an appropriate location for it to be convenient yet hidden from view. Moving back at the top of the bank I have kind of this nebulous area of tree pruning and uh, at the time of the plan was done there was some minor tree pruning then the tornado came through and did most of the work for them so you saw kind of a mess out there so we want to include that in this filing to clean it up now I tried to I did two kinds of flagging so the red flags are, are suggested to just be removed and anything green would be dead wooded, or if you saw a branch hanging off, you know, it would be cut off. No big deal. And there are a couple of branches that we flag green that are green, and that's the actual only like two branches that are proposed to, to increase a view uh, from the snug, which I'll get to in a, in a little bit. Um, there is one tree directly over the path now. We had to walk around everything, and that had a red, maybe a red and a green flag. So that was a pine tree I think and the top had broken off so I'm suggesting that it be removed because my opinion is that by the t now that the top is gone I don't think there's enough leaf area left to support the trunk so I think it eventually it's going to go anyway I, we we not going to force that issue we leave it up to the opinion of of the board but that was my suggestion based on that reasoning um, so that covers the pruning and uh, so coming back, uh, I'm sure you noticed like a 200-foot no-mow zone on this site, along with a, a, um, a wild flower meadow that the uh, applicants put in. I, Amy was aware of it. Yep. It <laughs> and uh, it, will, it will take time, but it looks great. Yeah. yeah. So a very well, very well natural, naturalized site. Um, we're not asking for a standing ovation, but I think the applicants of this type that come, f come before you with a property that's this well managed naturally is certainly a benefit uh, that far exceeds any expectations. Um, moving back up the path, we have um, what is called the snug. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let uh, Barbara explain the snug, but it's basically, it's a 12 by 12 structure, not a shed, but no utilities, it's a place to hang out. Um, it is 68 feet from the top of bank. And with that, I'll let Barbara take the rest of it. Yeah, I know Mark thinks we're kind of kooky, but it, it's really just a, a swing space for like reading. I'm a writer, so I would take my computer out there and write, uh, do some painting, kind of like a craft relaxation, maybe nap room. But we wouldn't wire it, we wouldn't have plumbing in it. Um, more just like a little, the house itself is fairly small. She shed? No, she shed. <laughs> okay. Um, that is the limit of the, that's the, the limit of the work. So I got the pier, the kayak rack, the vista pruning, and the snug. Um, the shellfish survey. So up in the upper right hand corner, you see the results of the shellfish survey plotted. Um, there weren't many shellfish on the beach. I think they're all just about located below mean, below mean low water. Three plots look like they're above mean low water. Um, there's three plots that were in the area of the float, but then all of the remaining plots are out in the river where, again, it's like five foot deep plus out there. Um, uh, Pamela Newbert did the, sh did the survey. She's uh, not able to be here tonight, but I think her report speaks for itself. And just as a comparison, the density here for 110 plots, there was only 30 shellfish found. So that's 
well under half of the density of some other projects. Um, I think with that, we'll open to questions. Thank you. Any comments for us, Amy? Yeah, I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to go from the land towards the water. Okay. 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 So um, well, I've had the pleasure of meeting the fellows a couple of years ago when they purchased the property, and it's very clear to them that they really want to keep the, the place very natural, and they enjoy that. So um, previously, the area that is now kind of a meadow had been mown, I think, a little bit more regularly, as well as the understory in the treed area, um, which is now, since they've owned it, is coming back, that under that treed area is coming back with bayberry and other uh, shrub vegetation, which is great. And the meadow, um, going forward, meadows, I mean, do provide different habitats than what we typically have. And I would recommend as part of this application that you allow them to mow the meadow once a year to keep out the woody vegetation to encourage the wildflowers and the forbs and the grasses for just a one time, you know, late fall mowing. Um, I know that's not part of your application, but maybe you want that. So it's snug. Um, so thank you, it is 68 <coughs> feet from, that was my question is how close to that. We have a 60 foot no new structure regulation mm -hmm. um, that came into place in October. So you're greater than that. Um, we do require for any new structure within the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone, in this case, top of coastal banks, we do require at least a two to one mitigation ratio for that. Um, whether the commission, as we go along, wants to talk about, you know, they're gonna talk about shellfish mitigation anyways, but a uh, thought that I had, and it's purely, purely mine, I won't speak for the commission, is you do have some invasive species in that wooded area there, and um, so I think where you're putting the snug is fairly, it's a benign location. I think it's permittable, but maybe if you do some a little bit of invasive removal and a little bit of planting closer to that top of bank area, just, just as a thought for that. We have been, sorry to interrupt, but around that um, wildflower. No, no, the earthy yeah, wildflower Yeah, there's area. all this bittersweet. At Bittersweet and then Black Swallow Ward, yes. we have been digging out yes. painfully. <laughs> um, so we'd like to keep, because that yep. has taken over a lot. Yep. So we would continue to do that around the snug as well. Um, the It was very clear to me what you were proposing to prune versus remove. Um, Storm did most of it for you. And um, if it was that alone, then you wouldn't have They are proposing to remove really the minimum of, uh, and most of it is storm damage, to get more of you through the vegetation rather than over or, it's, it's pretty dense there. Um, the kayak rack, I'll kind of bunch in with the dock. Instead of potentially, even though it's just dock there, instead of disturbing new area, maybe on the slope itself, Maybe if the dock goes forward, is it something that maybe you could put a rack, affix it to the dock structure itself, and not have to put something on the ground? Okay. Um, okay. Now going into the dock. So I got we got the comment letter from Division of Marine Fisheries, mm -hmm. and they said a few things there. Um, one thing that is fairly new to me was the um, height requirement or suggested height requirement off the marsh. Um, I can speak to that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, Division of Marine Fisheries did call this out as um, you know, Herring River is a fish run for a variety of species. We knew that. It is a shellfish, uh, both state and town map shellfish habitat, um, which is not surprising either. Um, but typically, the standard is that a dock should be at least one to one height off the marsh versus width ratio. So a four foot dock typically would only have to be four feet off the marsh. Now if you didn't want to have to do lateral access stairs for then you could go five feet off the marsh. In their letter addressing this particular project, they said, you know, due to recent studies, we're finding that um, docks are having an impact on salt marsh because of shading and that uh, deals with proximity from um, the marsh grass. So they are recommending a six foot um, height here, 
which if you're, I mean, you're going pretty much from stairs out to ramp anyways, it would be a high, higher structure, but maybe it just, you know, you're going to step down all the way, essentially, um, you know, it's, so maybe mm -hmm. that's a doable thing to do, is to accommodate for the six foot height suggestion that DMF has, which one of our concerns is always degradation to salt marsh. So if there is a way that we can greater prevent that, um, additionally, if you are spanning the marsh um, with no tiles in the marsh, good thing but if there's out of, you know along with the grading that you're proposing will help with light penetration as well as with height um, okay um, and then for the shellfish survey as we state we both stated um, it is both map town and state map shellfish habitat it's um, as we see in a lot of places there's kind of a thin ribbon here it does go out deeper than the uh, shellfish found go out a little bit deeper than potentially in other areas, which actually speaks to how when the sediment is um, a little bit farther down, which is a good thing. Um, and didn't get a, I know that this has been approved by the waterways. Oh, okay. And Boy, I news travels fast. <laughs> oh, did you just go? We, we were just there tonight. For some reason, I thought you were there. I thought. Okay. I thought the hearing was going to be on August 14th, okay. which is why we put the timing to be in front of you tonight. Then I found out, no, it's on the 21st. Okay. So that is the signed plan from Waterways. Maybe if you can describe a little bit, because we don't have any information um, from them. Yes. Then, <clears throat> but we would probably be looking for something in particular, I think shellfish, um, regards I, for, for, for Heinz. Right. So with I'll, that, I will I'll update you in a minute then. Or, or if you want me to speak to some of those, I'll do that. I will stop now. Um, they are proposing, well, I'll just say they are proposing shellfish mitigation mm -hmm. in the three years, 30 bushels a year mixed class shellfish. Um, predominant 29 quahogs found one oyster. Thank um, you, Amy. Oh, so can I address some of Amy's? Sure. Okay. So the height, so what happened was John Logan did a study. John, um, I'm sure Brad knows him. He did a study about a year or so ago. And um, I've read the report, and it's, it's a recommendation. Nobody, no town has adopted it yet that I know of. Um, so the, when we started out years and years ago, my very first dock in uh, 2008 was an elevated dock that was only 19 inches off the, off the ground. We permitted it with grading, and it went th sailed through all of the permitting agencies, no problem. Then Division of Marine Fisheries kind of poop, started to poo-poo the grading, saying, well, it's okay, it's a, it's a good thing, or a better thing, but, but they didn't really take it into account. We couldn't use it as mitigation for height anymore. Now they've come up with this one and a half to one ratio. So what I'm also finding, and this is not an argument, I'm just stating some facts. What I found in other projects that I've done is that now as the dock goes higher, people are like, hey, I don't want to see this thing. You know, it, it's really far in the air and, and the aesthetics and view and all of that. So it's a balancing act. Um, the five, this one is five foot to the underlying structural member, so we don't need the lateral access stairs. So that's kind of middle ground. And in cases where I don't see a lot, it's only one foot difference. So in, I'm basically recommending most of my docks now that we just stick to the five foot so we don't have to do the lateral stairs because in most cases they're a waste you know they, they don't really provide a benefit and if people are going to walk they're going to walk you know so um, in this case we've already discussed this with the thals about going up if we had to go up one more foot if that was the difference that it would make for this commission they're more than happy to do that we would however step it down another foot at the other end because the ramp then gets pretty steep so we would just compensate for that by stepping it down after the marsh at that outer pile and step it down the same amount, that's all. Um, in waterways tonight, so I, I gave them my quick spiel. I gave them the comparisons between this and the, uh, the other dock in Herring River. This one is nine feet shorter. Um, there is almost two foot more water at the end of the float. Both of them have two and a half feet on the inside. But this is a shorter dock. Um, with deeper water and ab about half of the shellfish density, if that helps you. The, um, it was a unanimous vote to not, not um, oppose the project at Waterways. Well, they can't, 
So they're an advisory board. So what they, what they will vote to is to not object to the project. Mm -hmm. They can't approve it or deny it. They vote not to object to it. Mm -hmm. That was a unanimous vote. Um, the reason I drew this purple line was because when we went out there, the harbor master was concerned of w how far this might stick out in relation to the adjacent docks. So if you look at this purple line, the float sticks out 20 feet less than the adjacent docks. We're taking advantage of a little pocket in the river. So it really is a nice place, the best place to put this, this float um, so it doesn't stick out as much. He had zero problems with navigation. Um, there are a couple of moorings around there, but they're not, they're not close enough to be of any concern. Hines was also not concerned, one, because of the shellfish density, and two, because of the mitigation for that. He says he does seed the river, but not specifically this site, so that's why there might not be anything on the beach and, and such. Um, so more or less the same kind of comments that you've heard from that uh, group, but they did vote to uh, not object to the proposal, and everybody signed uh, the plan. So I, I guess with that, we'll, pr we'll proceed on. Thank you. You're welcome. Mark, do you want to start? Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Come back if you want. Maybe. OK, that's fine. Jim? Um, well, yeah, the, uh, it's a really nice property, and I, I like the uh, your, uh, wildflower meadow. That's all good. Um, and we have uh, the landward building that seems makes sense not have any issues um, I'm, I'm still gonna vote uh, with our regulation on the dock which doesn't allow new docks and uh, shellfish areas and you know I, I think that there's maybe a need to revisit the regulations or something but uh, um, I don't want to uh, Second guess um, the interest of the town and you know town meeting and voting that regulation in. Uh, I, do, I do think there are some impacts to public access by putting a dock through a shellfish area. So I'll just I'll leave it at that. Thank you, <coughs> Stan. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, since you referred to the other dock that was approved and. I was opposed to that most of the way until the very end, and I begrudgingly was one of the ones that changed my mind. Uh, but I don't know if you or the commissioners understood why part of that, why I changed my mind. There was always the arguments about um, lack of data as to the impact on shellfish by putting in a dock in, and it was always opinion. There was no statistical data. As part of that, I think I requested as part of the order conditions for that doc that we develop st statistical mm -hmm. data over a three-year period, mm -hmm. which isn't done yet, not because of any fault, it's just of the three, three years. Three years haven't gone, right, right. So I think until we have data, and that was my intent at the time, because I was tired of hearing potential for and I won't mention any names of lawsuits to reverse that data or compare it to other docs that were denied. And I said, well, what we need is data. And, and that's my background as a previously a corporate controller, CPA, mm -hmm. and how I usually won my arguments with other people because they offered opinions very often without data was to have the hard data and be able to prove my point. And that was my real reason for doing that at that time, because I said, well, right, rather than risk having a reversal, let's get the, the data for future reference. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing. So in the meantime, until that data is available, as far as I'm concerned, if there's any a moratorium on any more docs, because as Jim says, to go along with our bylaws. Um, I need to say anything else at that point, but really, and, it, and it's 
just because we did at that point, it was like I said, get some data, and it wasn't setting a precedent. You know, um, and that was my reason behind it, and that's what I, all I have to say at this point. Okay. Thank you. Ernie, any thoughts? Um, no, I, I mean, I have some fundamental issues with the with things like the kayak rack, and that's, that's a material thing. From the, from the perspective of the overall plan, um, I wasn't at the last meeting we had on that, uh, where the decision was made to include the other dock. Uh, and up until the point, I was against it. Uh, to, uh, to the point, as far as having data, I think it's, a, it's the right way to approach this, is to wait until we do have an adequate set of data to determine what the impact would be. Because uh, once it's in, obviously, we can't change it. So that's where I stand. I think that Stan makes a good point. I would, I would, uh, uh, I would support that. Yeah, the, uh, just one other comment. Um, when I did that, I, I knew there was a big risk because one of the things that I really had problem with was if, if the data showed that there is a big negative impact, you can't remove the dock at that point. Mm -hmm. But at least going forward, if we have data for future reference, at least we have some direction and, and to support our decisions. Yeah. I just want to follow up on that because I, I appreciate your thoughts. I do think it's going to be difficult to collect data in the field that's going to demonstrate things one way or the other. It, we want that, we want to try to strive towards that, but it, it may not happen because um, you might not get a large change, you know, plus or minus. So I do well, agree that, with that you. That would be in favor of, yes. telling you of that lack of impact. Right, right. So it, it, could, yeah. it could be useful, but I, I tend to fall back on Jim's comment where you have a regulation in place, it's pretty clear, um, no new structures and shellfish habitat, and so it require a variance to do so, and I'm not inclined to support that variance for this type of structure. And I just wanted to give a little bit of information on why, because um, we're hearing about talk about impacts, and the impacts that I see are um, the pilings do create scouring, and so you do have a couple of pilings or, or support poles for the, the floats. So there will be some scouring of sediments around those. Um, you, you do get scouring around the main pilings, but I think you've really done a good job minimizing that by having the monopiles. And I'm not even going to speak about impacts to salt marsh here because I think you've raised it up high. So often I'm very concerned about salt marsh impact from scouring. Uh, you might have a little bit in that second piling. But along this area of Herring River, there's a lot of evidence of how docks have impacted both salt marsh and shellfish habitat through scouring impacts. Um, the second area would be the float itself. Um, the float will cause the boat impact and the float will cause um, removal of sediments and fine sediments can come in. It's not always a huge impact in a moving river like the Herring River, but it's still, you're at two and a half feet. So to me, that meets our regulation, but it's still, you're going to have some impacts at that two and a half foot area. So if this were to go forward, I'd probably seek to bump that out a little bit so that you might, you've got room to bump it out a little. Um, that would be something I'd, I'd go for. But I think I, I fall back on our regulations. I tend to read them very literally, and, and I have viewed impacts over the years, so I, I share that concern. I've also shellfished at both this site and the previous site downstream quite a bit over the years, and I find this site to be superior to that site for cohox. So the numbers didn't come up to demonstrate that, but this site has, on that slope, you know, where this float would be, that it's really good cohog habitat, whereas the other site, you get into the softest sediment sooner because it, there's less slope. Both sites have a fandom of oysters that didn't really show with a shellfish survey. But I, I have a hard time looking at the density of shellfish there and, and then looking at our regulation um, and, and saying that it's something that I can support. And I do support your guys, the idea that you know, with more information, you might be in a better position to support or not support. Come back to you at this point. Or? <coughs> sure. Okay. Um, the only thing I can add to this is I, uh, I'm not in favor of tabling things and waiting for two and a half or three years 
to have information come around. I don't think that's fair to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand everybody's point, but uh, I think the, I think the project deserves to move forward in some fashion, yay, nay, something other than be put in limbo. Okay, that's a that's a really good point, and I and I do feel that the data, you know, it, the the spatial and temporal coverage of the shellfish survey may or may not demonstrate or be able to demonstrate changes. In the Mark's point, though, if we vote against this, um, that would make it much more difficult to come back in three years, or less than that, two and a half years, or whatever it might be, um, and file for uh, reapproval on this. It would be easier if it was withdrawn, I think, until a three-year period, one and a half, two and a half, whatever it is, we're, we're up, rather than have a negative determination on this. They, can, they can appeal, you know, so they have, it's, they, that, they have options. That wasn't my intent when I did that. I'm saying the intent <coughs> was to gather data in the meantime, that gives us more um, strength behind our decisions because of the lack of data that's out there. I wasn't suggesting that this gets tabled. Yeah. Well, I, I think Jim and I feel pretty strongly our regulations are, are pointing the way with or without. The, the information we have is that there's shellfish present and there's significant shellfish present. So. I guess let's um, turn it back to you, and you can you know, offer comments or a way forward. Okay. <clears throat> well, so part of this you're gonna you're gonna um, is my answer is predictable. Okay. But so I look at this and I say, okay, so we compare it to a dock that was recently approved. It's shorter. You know, it's got the clearance. It's got the right design, the same design. There's less of a shellfish density because that was an issue. Um, so Okay. May I ask a question? You had mentioned before that when this last one went through that you were against it. Com oh, completely. But then it finally did get approved, right? So you have to imagine that, you know, my disappointment, I'll be honest, um, for us to the dock is just even getting to the water, right? Because it's a poison ivy field, which I am wildly allergic to. So for me, part of buying this house a year and a half, two years ago was, oh my gosh, I can, I can go to the water, and then I discover that I actually can't even get to the water. Um, and I guess emotionally, and you have to forgive me for this, but I see this monstrous house going up in a way that I would never do, because I do care so much about making sure we're according to regulations we need to raise it up to six foot. I'm absolutely fine with that. I love the monopile. I don't want to, I want the least impact as possible. But it feels really hurtful when I see this giant house with this giant dock that has less density of self shellfish and is much larger. It or more density. Or more density, sorry, there. Yep. And it's, it's twice as big. And it just feels very much like. Now we're going to, on my little project, we're going to draw the line in the sand and, and, and stop it all. It just, I'm sorry, I just had to, I understand your position, but I just that's, needed a moment. That's fair, and I just, I'll say one thing about that project was it, it had a 2-2 two -two draw at one hearing. It had, what, three or four hearings, and then I think it passed 3-2. Very, very tight, very um, contentious, I think. Not contentious, but um, there was definitely a split decision. And I think it, 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 it passed, it and, and, and if it got the vote, it passed. But I think, um, to me, the, the shellfish resources at this site are superior. You know, not it, according to the data. I know, and I, I've had a and lot that's of- that's your anecdotal evidence. That's it, not database. It, it is, it is. And even you know, we spoke to at Waterways, you know, when we were talking to Jeff Hines, yeah. you know, he was saying, we don't even see it in that area because it's not a particularly good area. So I, I would strongly disagree with that comment. Well, he's saying it, he, Heinz is saying he doesn't see. Right. Right. You know, so whatever is there deposits naturally. But it, right. the current is pretty swift there. Like I said, it right. ate two of my poles the first time I staked it. So if I can continue. If, sure. Okay. 
No, no, that's, that's all right. So yes, from our point of view, we say, okay, yeah, that one was contentious, but it did pass. And, and in my opinion, this is better than that one for many reasons. So it should be an easier decision. As far as the data goes, I'm all over that. That was one of our suggestions, saying you, we have all these assumptions that are being made without any data to back it up on either side. Um, there's definitely, Brad and, and Stan, there's definitely a difficulty in obtaining that data because as we pointed out, if you cordon off the area, then people be, will be like, oh, they may shellfish it more. So if the shellfish density is less, we can't prove, either side, we can't prove why it's less. And that's the difficulty in, in obtaining that data. Um, I think it's prudent to at least try, and the more docs you have that you're able to do that with is better for everybody. Because somebody else will argue and say, look, you only have one doc out there collecting this data that you've required them to collect. How can you base any decision on one doc? So that would be my, my vote to say, let's do some more, okay? The, the applicants would be perfectly willing to do that. And if we can develop a, a method between myself and Heinz and, and the board on how to come up with that data, I'm all for it. I think it would be awesome to, to get that data because on one side we say that we find more shellfish under a dock than we do not under a dock. We and the other side... Specify the species though. Yeah. It's not fair not to say the species. I understand. Um, but, but the other side says, no, there's a negative impact. And who do you believe? Because we don't really have any dependable data. So I'm all about that, and thank you, Stan, for bringing it up. But I think that this doc can help you get that data. And I do see it as less, much less than the other ones that were approved. As far as the variance goes, I, I made a very lengthy variance request using all of the data we've compiled over the years for other projects. And as I said before, I said that every new dock since 2003 has been in a shellfish area. So I just don't see where that bylaw has any strength left in it. I know you want it to, and I understand that, but every single dock, a dozen of them, have been approved since 2003, and they've every single area in Harwich, except for the one lot in Wichmere, two lots in Wichmere Harbor, are in shellfish areas. So I, I don't understand why it would almost seem to me like it would set a precedent to deny a dock based on that bylaw because so many have been approved since. And I, that's what I struggle with um, from, from a sti statistical point of view. So, um, so the applicants, again, obviously have taken very good care of the property. It's a, in, in my world, it's a completely different project than previously approved because it's better, it's well managed, the property is well managed. Um, it's a less than approach. The applicants are willing to raise the dock up, that's no problem at all. We'll take the kayak rack and we'll put them on the side, that's no problem at all. Um, and, and we'll find a way to collect valuable data that we both can use. And I think that's a good way to move forward with this. How, how do you wish to move forward? Um, I mean, we could have a vote tonight, if you wish. Uh, there's four voting members right now. There's four voting members, yeah. Why four? As opposed to? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not know that. <laughs> I, everybody has, you know, what I like about this board is everybody has a very list of experience and and input to what we do, you know, and that's really good. So each of you have a different thing to say, perhaps about the same subject, but a different, a different thing to say, and I think that's valuable to all of us. <laughs> well, often we have suggestions for changes, and then you, you come back and we talk about it some more. Um, this one, I, you've done a good job with salt marsh. I, I think that the site plan is good. I, I don't have, you know, the, is the mowing going to be to the 50? They'll keep it to the 200. Oh, They'll the keep mowing? it the way it is. No mow to 200 yeah, feet. Yeah, so, so that really everything well, is... Well, you know, they do mow within the... Well, they, they mow the path. The path. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, you haven't mown the field because you've only owned it for 
taking a, a year and a half, mm -hmm. but that's, that was a suggestion of mine, is to call it once, like we can talk about. But how, how, how far to the resource area? That goes to about the fifth acre from the top of the coast of Yes, Yes, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't support mowing that far down. Okay. Um, but, I mean, that's a small detail. You, yeah. you, you, you see what you want, and then you, you, you go back and forth and figure it out. But mm -hmm. I, I think, that, you know, the shellfish language, I, I haven't really changed my approach here. When I have voted in favor of the docks, there's been um, very poor shellfish habitat. And so I have supported docks before, but I, otherwise I had a pretty straight um, interpretation of our regulations. And, um, and I know this site pretty well, and I, I think it's, it, it's got significant shellfish existing in habitat. So um, that's my concern. You know, our regs also seek to have property owners look for alternatives, and one is to have a mooring. So maybe you can get some kind of a ramp down to the beach to access some mooring. I don't know if that's an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, we're not motor boaters, we're sailors, kayakers. Stand up paddle boarders and kayakers. Yeah. So I don't know. Th then that's and it's getting to my particular problem on one of my sons is like our ability to get to the water. Yeah. So maybe a raised boardwalk, four foot wide, and then some type of a modified um, kayak launching area that stays away from the shellfish area. You know, there, there could be something like that. I, I mean, that's, but if you're not going to use a powerboat or a sailboat, then boy, you, you might not, you know, you could really change your structure dramatically. Well, what would you do? Because reason, if anything that ends before the low tide line, then they have to walk through the marsh to launch the boats. So you want something over the marsh, and then you've got to figure out a way to get from the end of the marsh to the water. And that, the dock basically ends at the edge of the marsh, and it just puts right. the float out. Um, right. You can make the float, rather than push it out, I'd rather see to make the landward edge of the float narrower, like an 8 by eight by 20 instead of a 10. That way it doesn't stick out into the water more, but you get more uh, coverage, because the slope is so steep. I have to look at it on this. If you go out a foot, if you go out to make the float too deep narrower without pushing it out further, into probably almost another foot of water. If you, look, if you look down on your plan, right where the edge of the ramp is, I allow a two-foot overlap of the edge of the ramp to the float. So right under where the, the, the uh, wheel is on the, on the ramp is the distance you have. And that is probably, is it, that's two and a half, it's probably three feet. Yeah, so it's, it's probably three feet on the landward edge. Mm -hmm which exceeds any, any recommendation we have. But that would be one way to, to address that if you want more clearance. Um, we started out at 18 inches, and then with shellfish you go to two and a half feet. But remember, the outside of the float is where the activity is, and there's five feet of water there. Five feet. I mean, we don't get that. We don't, we don't get to see that anywhere. Right. But at two and a half feet, I, that's our reg is two and a half feet. But, right. I, but I'm not satisfied with that for avoiding impact. And, and so we have to grant that, but at the same time, I, I think there's impacts at two and a half feet. But we can fix that by narrowing the float without going further seaward. Even if we have room to do that, I'm sure that Heinz and John would appreciate that we could improve it without going out further, even if we had the room. Um, and they, so they were very much in support of this. They, they felt, as Heinz does, and, and there were absolutely no issues with navigation, whereas other projects have been tricky at the best. Um, and the, the shellfish mitigation, as you've heard Heinz say many times, he has no issues with this area. And because the shellfish density was so much less than other projects we reviewed, he certainly didn't have a problem with it because he didn't have a problem with them then. I mean, there's no dredging. It, it doesn't get any easier than this one. It really doesn't. If it weren't for that one regulation, this would be would fly through. Well, see, I, I, I still believe there's impacts. So it's not, it's not, it's the Wetlands Protection Act on top of our regulation. I understand. So but we meet, we meet, Brad, we meet all of the local regulations you have except for that one that has been, had 12, at least 12 variances against it in, since 2003. If right. it weren't for that one regulation, we meet everything that anybody could ever consider and then some. I would still say that we denied under the Wetlands Protection Act. Hmm? To, it would still be denied, in my opinion, on the Wetlands Protection Act, in really? addition to our regulations, which impacts the shellfish habitat. I don't understand that. Uh, help me under help me understand that because there's nothing in the in the state regs that would 
that would ever oppose this. You, you can't impact shellfish habitat. But we're not. See, I, well, I disagree. <laughs> I, I, I firmly disagree. <clears throat> I, I'm familiar with every dock on this river in this section between the two bridges. Okay. And there's not, there's not one that has an impacted salt marsh and or shellfish habitat. Okay, so I, and I get that's your opinion. All we have to go by is the data that we have and the regulations and the suggestions by all of the plethora of other people that have the same or different opinions of what to do and what is the right thing to do. The Dock and Pier Guideline, DEP, past practices and all of that. So I understand that you might disagree with that mm -hmm. um, and we can help you with that, you know, to make it better even beyond, beyond the regulations. So if we do that, I don't see how DEP would would have a question about this. Well, it, it's, it's our interpretation of the Weapons Protection Act. I think the industry's done a really good job with avoiding salt marsh impacts. Mm -hmm. And so the impacts I see in the river mostly go back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. They're built too low, too many pilings, pilings run the edge of the salt marsh. When that current rips by, it, it just degrades the salt marsh. And you see big paths of dead areas where there was salt marsh, it's now just muck under the, under the pier and on either side of it. Some cases it just carves out really large chunks way away from the pier. So that's something I think the industry's done a pretty good job to try to minimize. Mm -hmm. But I, I still still see the impacts. Recent approvals still have impacts. So I don't want to paint a picture that we're not allowing impacts. We're giving variances um, to existing regulations. Mm -hmm. So, and then I feel the shellfish impact is real as well. So it, it is tough because I think that we, we went through this stuff at the other dock and it was approved by this board. Um, at the same time, that, that didn't have my vote and, and this one is very, it's not very different because I be believe the shellfish is just as dense here and more so for cohogs. And cohogs are impacted by docks and piers as much as any species, so. So how do, how do we, how do I as a designer and, and my clients and, and the public in general, how do we look at that and say, well, we have, a, we have criteria that we do designs with, and, and um, I think this design well addresses nearly everything you can think of that, that would be bad for a dock, you know? But from our point of view, we've, I, don't know, I don't know what else we could do except we can move the float, you know? So I, I think our regulations are pretty clear. We're, we're asking property owners to consider alternatives such as getting moorings, sharing docks, um, or coming back with an alternative to meet the expected use, which is a much smaller structure for kayaks. Well, what would you suggest for kayaks then? Because you can't put a mooring, you can't put a kayak on a mooring. Amy! No, no, he has to. <laughs> well, I, th I think Amy's, you got some good ideas. I think something very modest that just <laughs> give, gives you a walkway and then gives you a little landing area. Um, I have no problem pulling a kayak over the salt marsh. It's really? not going to be done. How often is it going to be done? During the summer, it could 30 be... 30 times a year, max. I'm, I see... The, I, I struggle with that because I, I see all these sites that don't have access to the water over the marsh, and there's clearly a path through them. And to me, you're, you're damaging the resource that we are, like, praised to protect. Well, you, you're going to access the different tides, and yeah. so there'll be times where you're, you're, you're pulling it over mostly just sand because the tide's up high, and then... You're going to be pulling it over the salt marsh at lower tides occasionally, but how many times in the summer? You know, a dozen, two dozen, three dozen? So if we did an elevated walkway to something at the end, what would you suggest that something at the end be? More of a storage area. Huh? That, um, you know, because at low tide, it's, it's not going to help you because you're going to get into areas that, that you impact resources. You know, so, to, so at low tide, you just pull the kayak over the area, you know? Um, I don't, I'm trying to think of an example in Harwich where there's a kayak dock. We approved one in Sacratucket. There's a boardwalk that spans, the, there's one on Herring River. Mm -hmm. It's on Riverside Drive. Yep. And it spans the marsh, but there's no dock to the end of it. It's a, it's just a boardwalk. Yeah. But it's raised. Okay. Um, that was, it was fairly contentious. It's a little bit farther up the river on Riverside Drive. They came for it for a dock, didn't get it for the reasons you're talking, we're talking about tonight. Um, before Brad, you were here, it was before anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, south of the Barton property. Right. So we did allow that. That's still a fairly large structure and maybe not something that you need um, mm -hmm. for if you're just talking about 
bring boats in and out um, or walking in. So your idea in taking into account access for you and your son, who are highly allergic to poison ivy, some sort of a little boardwalk through the wooded area that also channel it also keeps you on a path through that area down the slope. Um, and then the National Seashore uses marsh mats, essentially. It's um, a through coat grading system. Yes, you are going to degrade a little bit of salt marsh, but it provides a stronger base um, for walking on, and it wouldn't have them out in the shellfish area. It would, it would eliminate the need for a structure <coughs> below the high tide line. Right. Wasn't, wasn't there a little bit of beach 50 feet to the left? Of the There's a little stuff? bit of a beach, yep. Yeah. Where? 50 feet to the left of the proposed dock yeah. or the south? Yeah. yeah it's just a there, bare there's, area. There's beach sand. without salt marsh existing. Okay, so let me so. let me propose this then. Um, in other towns, what I've done successfully many times, we have areas where the water isn't deep enough to have a dock, but people still want to go over the marsh because they don't want to trample through it. They feel that's bad. They don't want to get stuck in the mud. Um, so what I've done, and I don't have anything with me, but I can show you at, at, at another point. So what we've done is, is typical elevated boardwalk, which would look just like this, only maybe we, it, it, with your permission, maybe we do drop it down to the one-to-one. -one. Well, no, then we have to have the lateral access stairs, which is a pain in the butt. Um, so maybe we keep it exactly the way it is. When we get to the end, though, what I did with these other projects is right at the edge of the marsh, yeah, the marsh, not... Right, the outer edge of the marsh where you have low tide and water. Okay, you've gone over all the vegetation. You go down a set of stairs to a platform. Now that's a fixed platform. It doesn't have to be a float. So it could be a fixed platform that's two and a half feet above the grade. Um, doesn't have to be very big. And what that platform does, it allows you to walk down the stairs, albeit with a kayak, but you walk down the stairs. I guess we could use a ramp to the same thing instead, so it's something smooth. Um, but the, you have a fixed platform, not a float. And that platform is right at um, mean high water. So with grading and everything else. So it would flood and all that. Yeah. Off to That's the side. The what? That's in the marsh for this no, 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 not the, at the edge. No, the height of it is at mean high water, but the location of it is on the seaward edge of the marsh. Right, okay, so you're talking the location of... So like where your second piling second is on piling. this thing? Yes. 23 feet out, yep. essentially. So right in that area, what we would do is have stairs or, or a ramp that come down, but to a, a lower fixed platform. That platform is set at a height of mean high water. So at high tide, you can walk out, the water will be right there, and you can step into your kayak. Then... For the lower tide access, we put one set of stairs perpendicular to that little landing so you can get down to the beach. And then that way you can set your kayak on the, on the, um, on the landing that's at mean high water, which is about, say, this high. When you, when you walk down the stairs, your kayak is now this high. So you walk down the beach, your landing is right here, you pick up the boat and you can swing it over and put it back in the water. What that does, it allows you to safely access over the marsh without touching it or damaging it at all. It gets you down right at the edge of the marsh to a fixed platform that you can either launch at high tide or it gives you beach access at a lower tidal elevation. No dock, no boat. Um, you can't tie the kayak up to it. You know, so that gets you the access. I've done three of those in Dennis when we only had... Uh, a foot and a half to two feet of water so I have pictures of them but if you would if that's um, a compromise because they're not going to be boater, motor boaters then that might be something that works I don't think you've ever seen it before but it's not uncommon to me I, I think it would get away from the shellfish concerns um, my, myself I would st still consider just a walkway and then just pulling the kayak down to the water um, but it depends on what you want. You know, it's your property. Um, I think that would get away from the shellfish concerns, what you just described. So I think those are a couple options, you know, walkway to having a kayak rack um, or what you just described, mm -hmm. I think. And I, I don't think you, you know, you want to take off the table the, a mooring opportunity where you have a, a dinghy 
and a walkway and a, and a place to keep them warm. Um, at least our regs encourage people to consider that option. How do you use a mooring with a kayak, though? I don't get that. I, I got to get do, to it. You still got to. I do it right yeah. now, yeah, in, in Wichita Harbor. Swim? Kayak. No, but you're saying we only, if we only have a kayak and we have a kayak on a mooring, how do I get to the mooring? Oh, I, I see a kayak. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> Ka kayak. Wait, wait I'm just. I'm thinking mooring. That's yeah. like using a dinghy to get to a dinghy. Yeah, right. so <laughs> skip that comment. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't apply here. But, you know, we're, we're permitting future use. We're permitting something that, yeah. that goes on beyond your present interest. How does the rest of the board feel about that approach? I'd like to see it. Mm. I mean, okay. It sounds feasible, but I think we need to actually see what, what's being proposed. Stan? Yeah, you said you've done some of these, if you have pictures of them yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I, I have tons of pictures, and I have pictures of the path that's worn through the marsh on this one project from the use, and then a year later, you'd never know the path was there. It's awesome in my world. makes a difference down the road. I mean, that's you could always the future. What, what, what do we require in that one? I forget. I don't have it here in front of me. It was like, an like a one year after or something like that. So it's in now. Yeah, I think it was every um, year for a year we do some kind of an assessment. Well, I know, <laughs> I know initially, I know initially, well, but I don't, soon. I'd have to look at the order of conditions. Yeah. But I remember because initially you proposed at the end of the year to replace any shelf, you know, like a shelf, additional shellfish medication, and that's when I asked for three years. Yeah. But I'm not. I mean, I could go pull the file if you really wanted me to. Well, but well, here's a concern I have: is that you know, the recruitment of shellfish is dependent on so many things, right. much more influential than mm -hmm. uh, something like a dock. And so you right. could have a There's thirty. A lot of variables you there. have thirty percent increase or decrease in densities, mm -hmm. independent of the dock. So I. I respect what you're looking for, and I think it could be helpful in the bigger picture. I think that we still have to view this project as proposed. In oh, that. I agree. No, and that's what I was saying. My yeah. intent was for future reference, so that we have yeah. data to be able to, um, you need to support our decisions. I think you need like a $20,000 study that really specifically yeah. looked at a structure, pre-construction, post-construction. John Logan did it with salt marsh. That was a, a set quantitative study. Mm -hmm. I don't think what we've asked for in that order is going to give you what you want. Um, you know. The your other thing, yeah, the the right other thing I think of, with, by, if, if you're only using it for kayaks, I mean, I'm a kayaker, to have a dock out there, and then you have to deal with storing the float in the winter and getting it off the, uh, you can't leave it on the, on the bank or on the marsh, so now you're going to have impact at that because if we see it on the, on the salt marsh, yeah, that's that has property. Property. That's not going to happen. Yeah. No, and no. we have a lot of property, right? Big gravel right. No. Right. Well, if we do what, what I'm think, if we do what I'm dis discussing, there is no float. It's a fixed platform. Right. No, 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 I'm saying, but if you have a dock, I'm saying for, if all you're doing is for kayaks to have a float and then have yeah. to deal with that at the end of the season, or everything, that's a... Yeah. Um, to answer your question, if the structure is already there, let's say it ends at the marsh and then we transition down to the to the beach as whatever, you know, how we do it, like I said, that structure is there. So in the future, if, if docks were allowed, you can just add on to it. Okay. And you would either have to file another order for that extension or amend the order that you have. But the basic structure would be there already. So the structure that we're sort of suggesting yeah. before you get to the water, I guess. Well, over the marsh would stay the same. Yeah, where this pile is, yeah. everything back would be the same. Got it. We would just transition to the beach as soon as we can after that piling. Okay. And then have to have a little platform here okay. at mean high water. I'll, I'll, I can show you the pictures too. And then, um, okay, so give us a little time to noodle on this. I mean, I can throw together the revision easy enough, but um, I, I want them to be able to embrace it as well 
if I can give you the addresses, they're in Dennis on Grand Cove. Um, there are three of them in the same embayment, so it's a short side trip if you want to look at them. Uh, but let me know so I can tell them because it's not a filing. Yeah. Uh, but a picture's worth a thousand words. I'll, uh, I can pictures send you the pictures. Yeah. Huh? Pictures would be good to start with. Huh? Pictures would be good to start with. Okay, so somewhat disappointing, um, but we have a plan. We digest it. Um, we have, so our dates in September are the 4th or, or the 4th or the 18th. I was going to say, I wasn't looking that hard because it wasn't what we were looking at, but it seemed like there was beach without salt marsh 50 feet to the left mm -hmm. with beach access mm -hmm. all the way from the existing path to the beach without yeah. having to deal with any salt marsh. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like that'd be a good place to do whatever. We still have to get to it for me, um, but yeah. As far as the, the bank, I mean, I, yeah. we almost always approve stairs on the bank and pet in the paths and everything, okay. so. <laughs> yeah, always. I'd, I'd, I'd say paths, uh, yes. Structures. I, 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 said, oh, I said almost. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. The regulations. For, so that's so a one four foot. Yeah, path. Path. Oh. Um, um, let me see. Keep in mind again, revisions for this. The 18th is pretty open, isn't it? Yeah, the 18th is. Um, Other than the fourth. Jam, but <laughs> it is what it is. We take them as they come. Your call. Um, probably the 18th. We're, we're here on the 4th for Go back. something unpleasant. So um, <laughs> let's. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I, did you say what you think you said? No. Mark, oh. I didn't. I, I said, no, I would never say that. Not on camera. No. <laughs> Mark's being uh, negative. Okay. Well, it isn't pleasant at this point. You know, no, it just I isn't. Know. I'm just being truthful. All right. So September 18th. Yeah. You good with that? Have revisions by the 11th. It would be good. So with whatever we to. choose. There. Okay, well, I, I move that we continue the project until September 18th. And second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Get out more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good night. Good night. Good night. Do you do the yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's only. Oh, there's two. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to read Fiddler's because I, I'm curious about the benchmark, but I'd say proceed with the first one. All right. Because I, I haven't read either one. So. Well, I don't, oh, why don't we, can we take a two minute break um, and you guys can okay. catch up? And sure. I'm just gonna Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Which one? Fiddlers? Yeah, Fiddlers. That was the one where well, it had a revet. a lot further down than we said. Yeah, we, we didn't. Yeah, we, I know. Yep. We tuned the yep. configuration of the revetment quite a bit. Yep. I'm curious about the the um, benchmark to make sure it, it makes sense. It's in there.
Yes, yeah, I'd like a benchmark on at least two on either side of it. one is a great example of how hard structures impact adjacent areas. Oh, yeah. The energy from this thing is well, just... Well, no the problem. one on Fiddler's Landing was a yeah. good example, too. That one, the one next door to it that right. was causing all the... They're, they're losing property. Yeah. And it's amazing how the salt marsh is hanging in there. Yeah. But the, the erosion is really exacerbated. And That's um, why we didn't really get... We were probably like 100 feet south of there, yeah. where we were. It's, it's really a good site. I wish we had the time to walk around Harry River and, and I could talk about some of these things. It's, it's beyond anecdotal. Um, you know, just show you some sites and we could talk about what's happened. Um, well, I think it's good we're finally making this decision about the art, right? Yeah. You know, I think it's a long time overdue. Right. The last one should have been this way, too. We, we well, didn't. What was interesting before our regulations were in place in the 90s, there was just this commission was not approving new structure, new docks where there was shellfish. They were just doing it, and for a decade, people weren't even coming forward. Yeah, because yeah, the, but this one cut. That, that's that was the impression that, I was under right. until now. Like I thought there was no way. There was, much a, there was, no there was way. a big chunk of time where it was just understood. On this one, um, no, on the other one. On the other one. Pushing harder these yeah. days, yeah. You know, more money behind that it. Right. And what constitutes a significant amount of shellfish, though? It, it's That's not clear. Our eggs. It's not clear. And we've talked about it. We've I've done research under like an assignment <coughs> to go look mm -hmm. at other towns, mm -hmm. and we've talked about changing that reg. That doesn't so significant as it is. It just says shellfish habitat. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, so it doesn't have to. It can be form of shellfish habitat. I like to put something that um, kind of specifies some detail to there, so people see that metric and say, okay. This is a concern. But that does well, become an issue when we look at the difficult shellfish thing. surveys as to some people argue about is it significant or not. Right. Right. Well, the, the, exactly. And, and the difficulty I see is you have people spending money to do a survey and then we come in and banter about opinions. Yeah. Right. You know? That's I mean, that's hardly fair to anybody. Well, they have to do the survey. It's, it, it's in the regs. So mm -hmm. they have to do the survey. Um, but, but if there's no definitive line to say yay or nay, What's the result? What is the result? What does it prove? The nay is you can't put a structure there if it's shellfish habitat. It's pretty clear language. And so it, it doesn't even have to have... Um, but yeah, say so even shell fragments. It can be former ha form, former habitat. formerly had habitat. Yeah, that's so what's somebody the put that reg in very <coughs> clearly to reduce impacts. And um, so... I, I'm, I'm still, I'm in favor of just doing a regulation that like Pleasant Bay has of 250-foot uh, spacing yeah. just to make it really simple and it would basically have the same yeah. same uh, impact as this regulation, but it wouldn't be something we'd have to argue about endlessly. Right. Well, the other one, the other that's one that's what right Pleasant Bay has. About yeah. Yeah. Right, and they sp specifically say, what, what's it in the cove there? There are no, no dead right? yeah. I mean, but that was a push by somebody, you know, with right. the town staff or the commission. There's yeah. really not an opportunity for that anyways anymore there. Yeah. Really no. And here's the funny thing. The Herring River has super far superior shellfish resources than those fringes okay. of Pleasant Bay. Yeah. So we probably should be doing a better job protecting them. It's hard, though, you know, to, you know, have someone see another dock go in. Yeah. It, it's okay. Absolutely. That's tough. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, now she was probably told that there's a good likelihood that. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a two way street. We've, yeah. been, we've had people come here and tell us things about docks that is, are inaccurate, so it's, and it's I mean, hard. It makes it very clear that Mark, and Mark no, shellfish is going to come up when yeah. we come with a survey that does show you there's not even any bad sediment here. It's yeah. good sediment. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So. Usually a lot of oysters there, so I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah. Um, oysters didn't come up. They did it in March. Not that it would matter for oysters. They should be there year-round. Well, well, you know what's going on in March? 
they're fished out. So the survey was in March. Yeah, so oh. it, it opens on like November 1st. That's something about the data is, it, is right. there's, you know, yeah. are, are we yeah. on? We are. Okay, so it, yeah, yep. no, nobody fishes. So that fish. was one of the things in here. <laughs> nobody. Okay, let's get on with the order before I talk too much. Yeah, yeah, I haven't kind of seen any issues with either of them. You've mentioned the benchmark. Yeah. yeah. Amy, one comment I have on the order for five fiddlers is, yeah. is the benchmark. I think I asked to have a benchmark at either end. Okay. So, um, yeah, just, so two, you know, just two locations. And, and they're, um, and does it say they're going to be surveyed? This is shown this with data point, yeah. So the elevations are surveyed to the, the yes built plan. And I think that's implied, but I think having one at either side. Yeah, of, okay. Yep, so that's, that's all I really came up with there. Any other comments on five fiddlers? No. I move we approve the order of condition for five fiddlers landing. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 On Doan Road, Amy, yeah, I, I yep, I, I, in terms of uh, special condition number 11, I think that's the way we left it, is that there would be some options. That's what I but, <coughs> Yeah, at the same time, um, I kind of wish we zeroed it in a little bit better. I could just say, yeah, well, discussed and agreed upon at the on, it does say it's discussed and agreed upon at the onsite pre-construction meeting. Yeah, that, that, I think that's the way we left it, but I, I just, in and retrospect. I document which they choose. Yeah. I wish we kind of zeroed in on. Yeah. I, I thought it was the two million stones. No, I, I think we, he, I think he wanted to think about it a little he bit. He was thinking about the living fence. And which I think, strongly. which I liked yeah. probably more than anything. As long as it was substantial plantings. Oh, yeah, as long as they're substantial. Yeah. yeah. The only thing it's beyond that, it's all invasive. So the only yeah. thing with those is they're going to, if, if he, he's the owner, but he's not going to, he's building this to be a spec. Yeah. Because we're, whatever plants go in there aren't going to make it because they're going to get overtaken in a couple of years. Right. Well, you so. use your best judgment then. I, I think that's fine. If it was a set owner who I, we knew was going to maintain it, yeah. I'd be a little bit more, I would be all over the living mm -hmm. fence. But I don't want to put plants in that really it's going to get overtaken in two years. Yeah, he wasn't really proposing any removal there. Yeah, and it's something that the cert will have to, you know, will have to demonstrate that they did it. The right. cert. And like okay. If you can't find them, then. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good chance that the next owner will come in and go for an invasive removal. Hopefully. There's a decent chance of that, and having the, you know, the stones or something there would at least, and this condition in there, yeah. would at least show where things stand. Mm -hmm. so. I guess I like the stones are really substantial living fence. Yep. Okay. Any other comments on that one? No. I, I move we approve the order of conditions for 15 Dome Road. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So you know, we the, the minutes are almost ready, and I think I put a set of minutes in there, but my fault we didn't put it on the agenda from the last okay. meeting. So both January 16th, as well as the meeting last meeting, which I did, will be on your next agenda for approval. So don't okay. worry about that. Okay. Um, in lieu of fees discussion, we can officially talk about if you're interested in doing such a thing. So just to recap. Um, I did speak with town accountants on how we could set that up both legally. Um, the most easy way to do it is we already have a wetlands revolving account, which is a portion of the notice of intent piece, um, which where we use for 
various studies of how we paid for the second, help pay for the second opinion on fixing the bells next to the line. Um, we do have a line item that only we can touch, and it's for um, conservation purposes. So for wetland restoration, open space purchases, conservation things. So we already have that fund, but it's very specific that it's the notice of intent fees. Mm -hmm. We can broaden that to be for in-loop fees for mitigation for projects where on-site mitigation is not possible. You don't have to accept it. It could be an op but it could lead you to another option for some of these sites that may be trickier um, to allow to have mitigation on. So regardless if you're a reuser, I think, I think it's a good option to pursue to have it. Because right now, we don't have that option. Right. Um, so what it would be is it would have to be a language vote at, because town meeting established a revolving fund. It would be a town meeting vote to augment that language. We would draft the language. And really hoping for a fall town meeting, but so we could have done it this fall. But it does not look like we're going to be having a fall town meeting. This is going to be really driven by the Dennis Harwich Yarmouth um, multi town agreement. So it's like not all the funding at the state or federal. Some of it's come through, but not all of it's come through. So that was driving. That's the reason they were going to have a fall town meeting. Oh, I thought they were going to do it for phase two. Well. That's it. Part L. Oh. For additional. Oh, so that's the unknown still, whether right, or not they right. need to do another contract. Right. From my, what I understand, it is not likely that we're going to have a town meeting so oh. in fall. But that would be a way to do it. Um, Can I also direct the fine income to this? No, no that is a state law um, that fines. Um, I'd have to, well, they can, uh, the Wellman Protection Act fines would go, go into the general fund. Some, uh, something I didn't think about is bylaw. Uh, we find, whenever I, we find somebody, I always do it, I cite the bylaw and the Wellman Protection Act. So I wonder if, um, I'll have to look at the language to see if <coughs> a bylaw violation can go into that. How do you want to get together language for this in the fee thing? Because I, I think the devil is in the details. I was going to draft something to you, and we could. I meant to do it before tonight. It didn't happen. Um, yeah. for, I wanted to see it before I even do it. Is there a desire oh, yeah. by you for me to do that? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I just would really want to look at what other towns have done and be very careful that we don't yeah. open up a situation where people are starting to come in yeah. and impact things we wouldn't allow. Right. Previously. Yeah. No, I, th I think there is some good. I th uh, each town has kind of strengths and weaknesses when you look through them. I know uh, one of the towns I reviewed automatically goes to four to one mitigation when it has to be done off site mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's just not ideal. Right. Um, how do they get their cash? Is it just a, a resource improvement or they, how do they get their cash well, estimates? Well, they have. Um, you know, sometimes there's a he header under offsite mitigation, and it could be simply um, restoring some other property they own. Mm -hmm. uh, could be purchasing or you know uh, putting a conservation restriction on developable property within a similar buffer zone, or there's the the per square foot um, fee. And yeah. e either way, that's at a four to one rate. So if you're this, and it's based on disturbance, not on, you know, not the structures. Yeah. So if you're disturbing 5,000 square feet, you would have to pay that fee on 20,000 square feet. Yeah. Yep. So it's not necessarily in the most advantageous way to do it. I think it would be a last resort for mm -hmm. uh, proponents, <coughs> as maybe as well as the commission. But in certain cases, I, I think it might be the only way forward other than simply approving or denying. Or, or denying. Yeah, it gives a third option other than approving something that's going to have an adverse impact. Denying, um, it gives a third way to mitigate for. We just have to be careful because mm -hmm. if, if all of a sudden the cost is $7,000, people will like sign me up. Well, well that's, yeah, yeah I, I think that it's like three, what is it, like 325 a square foot in Barnes. So just for 50 a foot. Maybe. 50. $2.50. So, 
Okay. So if you're at a four to one ratio and you disturbed uh, 20,000 square, or disturbed 5,000 square feet, so you have to 20,000, so you know, you're at $70,000 mm -hmm. in mitigation fees, which is probably about right to actually restore mm -hmm. 20,000 feet right. of buffer zone. It probably costs $70,000 with four years of mm -hmm. monitoring and care mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, uh, I think these, uh, yeah, it's not it, it, it might, you know, we could potentially get some quotes from various uh, uh, consultants, out outfits that do that type of work, but mm -hmm. I think they're uh, relatively high priced as my, yeah. my feeling. Well, hopefully this yeah. would be really a, a, a rare occasion yes. for, you yeah. know, lots. Not, not, not something you could do as an alternative to just say, oh, well, I'm not right. going to. Well, it's, it's coming up more now because there's just less buildable land and, and builders and developers have skipped over these lots for the past few decades. Right, no, so, so like, yeah. they like, we don't, more to those lots We don't want to deal with conservation. It's going to be a problem. And now there's so little left, they're like, well, we're, going. we're going to try it. We're going to do the best we can. Yeah. So I think we're going to see actually a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, and we are, we are seeing a lot yeah, of it. Right. There these marginal mm -hmm. properties. But I'm uh, saying for other occasions where people are just doing work for mitigation. No, yeah, yeah that, I, 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 I think be, that's not going to be an that's not going to be an alternative. This no. is only if you can't do it on right. site. Right. Exactly. Like even still, it's not a guarantee that you're going to be allowed to do it. Right. Right. So right. You still have to prove that you're not having an adverse impact to the resource area. So mm -hmm. if you prove you're not having an adverse impact to the resource area of your project, there's no other option for mitigation. Then maybe the offsite is an option. Yeah, if you've still minimized, you've done right. planted buffer strips at the edge, yeah. but there's no way on a pristine lot to right. mitigate the adverse impact. It's just not possible. I told them that by Shady Drive this morning. Yeah. They got destroyed yeah. by the tornado. Oh, really? There's huge. I mean, I couldn't even walk in there if I wanted to. From the, it's not some so of the big pine trees that came down. Yeah. Yikes. All right. Well, it sounds like yeah, <coughs> draft some language, and I think we'll just have to really maybe not have some time to look at look at it, talk about it for one meeting, then maybe approve at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? So I mean I'll keep an eye on whether or not they're thinking of doing this for town, if they're actually gonna have a special town meeting. I mean I don't know if we want to push push it. Um, definitely a May town meeting with the required submittal in January, which is when our One, uh, I, I don't know if you already went through this with town council. Um, I wonder if we would already be allowed to accept something like that if proposed by the proponent, because we're allowed, they're allowed, the project can go forward with any commission approved mitigation. Um, but where did the money go? But it's still got to be the. Where, right, right the, now the, we don't. They have would have to propose. A way uh, for, for the money to go because. Spoiler ups, which one of the lines in that is that they can consider uh, accepting it to another organization if it's going to go to the right okay. thing. But, but I have to look at that. Yeah, I'm just thinking with stuff that's going to happen in the next several months to yep. give, us, <laughs> give us an option. Um, the only I reason I mention that. I asked you earlier, buddy, it would be more to do with that, um, the Army Corps program for the Oyster Reef project. Yeah. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? What do you think? You can. Um, you can. I honestly haven't read everything. Yeah. Um, so if you want to bring it up, it's not in their other under business, but if you want to move. Yeah. It's, if you it's, want to talk about it for a few minutes. Yeah. There, there's a, a grant program with, that wants pre-proposals by next Friday. And what I thought is that might be a good match for the oyster reef funding. Actually, Nikki brought it to my attention. Yeah. And, and so I, it's really kind of like, I guess, a question between myself and you and Nikki. Do you think it's a good idea? And is there time to make it happen for a submittal next Friday? I can honestly tell you I can't. But mm -hmm. if you and Nikki can, then I'd, yeah. like realistically, I would absolutely can't. 
Someone has to. Someone has to sign it. I don't know what the town has for like grant application approval processes. Um, it depends yet. on the level. Sometimes it has to be a town administrator select, and in which case we mm -hmm. would be able to get on a select meeting. Right. But it could be the town administrator. Right. Um, in some cases, for small grants, I've signed them. Yeah. On behalf of the town. It's a pre-proposal. Yeah. And um. Okay. You know, it, so you could cut and paste my draft. Yeah, I saw that you did that. And, and so it would be really easy to do. I just, you know, the administrative burden would probably come back to you and Nikki. So you guys would have to be on board. I'm, I'm just being honest. I won't be able to. Yeah. But um, I can see if Nikki would be yeah. able to. She's expressed interest in grant stuff anyways. She brought it to my attention. So, it, that, so that was maybe I'll just let her run with it, and then I'll review whatever she comes kind of the final draft and then sign okay. off. It, it, it's up every year, and what happens, it's a big Army Corps in lieu fee program. And they take funds, just like we described from projects, and they have a, a, a system that was developed for years, and it's really detailed. And they have all these categories where they get funding from different people, and they spend it on different resource improvements in different regions. Mm -hmm. And so the CAPE will have a set of money that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. There's a whole list of things that could be, and one of them is shellfish enhancement. And so. We, we don't really need that much money for this. We kind of need um, to start the process. I, the cost estimate was six grand for what right. I proposed to do, but really we probably want to do more than that because that's like a very small pilot project. So if we ask for like 15 grand, you know, I think it, it might I'll, be. I'll talk to Nikki tomorrow and see if she okay. has time to do it. Yep. I can help her, yep. but it really, again, you know, say that if they say yes, the administration still comes back. I, I can help out a little bit. That's fine. It, yeah. It's just a time. You said two weeks, and I could say, yeah, I can do it. But no. um, all right. So well, let I, me talk to Nikki, and I'm, I'm hopefully I'm, it sounds like she'll be willing to help if yeah. she's the one who reached out to you. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm as interested to start the permit process because I know that's going to go on for a full year. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping we can do fairly soon. I think we did it. Uh, we're almost ready with it. Thank you. Thank you. Any update on some of these fines that we've levied? Is, is anybody paying them? Nope. Um, we sent another round out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, actually, no. The um, Sorry, I did hear back. I heard back from the fence people on Uncle Beanie's Road. Um, and they had said, they had con this was back in March that they got the, that it was supposed to be gone and it's still there. And I got a message the other day from them saying, Oh, we contracted a contractor, but we're on their wait list. And I'm like, did you contact them in March? Because your wait list shouldn't be that long. Um, but I gave them a, no, I gave them a deadline of, I can't remember the date in September. Were they fined as well? There was a fine. There was yeah. a 300 fine mm -hmm. for the fence. And I said, if you don't have it out by this date in September, it's going to be daily. Okay. Um, so there was an initial fine because you didn't comply with the original removal date. Mm -hmm. Gave you a new removal date. If you don't do that, it's going to be going to be daily. How about if they take it out but don't pay the three hundred initial fine? It's up to you. Yeah. Technically, they're they're going to have unless they contest the fine to you and you waive it, it's going to stay on. Yeah. That would stay on for perpetuity and probably sell the property. It's going to pay. It's not on the property. It's on the individual. So it's actually a. Yeah. I, I would suggest in those cases that you have a secondary fine that if a certain amount of time lapses um, without, yeah. without payment, right. then another 300 kicks in. Yeah. Uh, so, keep on. Are, are we going to kickstart Walker again? I have passed administration where we are with that, because, and I asked administration to ask council about Mr. King on um, Northrop Avenue because he just indefinitely continued and he still has that structure that's in violation. So yeah. I did talk to kind of administrator and he's like, oh yeah, that's been a while. I said, I think we just move forward with the, the litigation mm -hmm. at this point. Is he challenging us, or are we going after him? He's 
challenging our decision to yeah. go after him. <laughs> we issued an enforcement order to remove said structure. Right. He challenged that. Um, then he filed a notice of intent to be denied mm -hmm. for the said structure. So. Is it up to his attorneys to? Can't talk too much because it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a executive session material. You're right. Sorry, I shouldn't have even said what I said. Yeah, you're right. Um, Okay, any other new business? I sent you a notice of a workshop that's happening. Um, you can sign yourself up at the Point Bay Reserve. It's mm -hmm. free. You can sign yourself up. Um, okay. <coughs> Is there any update on the oil spill that took place down there? Yeah, we have a monitoring plan, but so they did the initial cleanup. We all familiar with the oil spill. Yeah, so 4,000 gallons got out, about 2,200 gallons of that got into the big catch basin, which MassDOT owns and has no infiltration. It's just been piped up in the marsh. So they have, you know, immediately the first day it happened, they had the emergency certification to do essentially whatever was needed to get it out. They've mad or, uh, absorbed it and sucked it out. They have not done any excavation. And every day, so it's being held up by insurance. Um, every day that it sits, that gas gets farther and farther out. They recently today found they didn't. They, they thought all the gas got into the catch basins and stayed on the road. They recently found that it's in the soil, so off the um, So we have. They have a site licensed site professional. They have a team who's doing the remediation. It is not moving as fast as the fire department, the water department, the health department, basically everybody else would like it to. <coughs> they don't know what else I can do to make it go faster because it seems to be held up under insurance because it's the insurance. Have they given a projected start date? Yeah, for the excavation, have not started yet? No emergency funds we can tap for that? On private property, too. Most of it dumped out onto what is actually private property. But the people who live off of. What's that, what's that street behind Jay Green? No, I didn't. which ends up in Allen Harbor, but I saw a sheen at the boom that they installed underneath the Lower County Bridge. They said it wasn't gasoline, it was organics. Was this day the that, 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 that they sucked a lot out of that depression? They and, did, yeah. they did. Um, yeah, they think about right. half, but. Yeah. What do gas it there? It does, it, it, gets, it gets into the soil and into the salt marsh, which is pretty anoxic. Right. And Soak it in. And we don't know the impact it's having to the water quality. So I will keep you updated with that. Is there any sign of any fish kills or anything in Heron River? No. It's interesting. Not what I heard. Yeah, the uh, bloom and seems to be starting to You're abate. Yeah. You talked about Heron River, I told Paul a couple weeks ago, I was kayaking north of 28. Past the island, there's a seal up there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're all over. They're way up. They're way over. Up. I'm gonna motion that we adjourn yeah. just because I need to go. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a long, long day. I second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I'd like to chat some more. But. <laughs>